hello. <clears throat> wow, two words and I'm clearing my throat. <coughs> Crikey Riley. Hey everyone. Hello. Hello. Welcome. 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 <clears throat> One second. Water. That's a good start. Welcome, welcome. It's Sunday. It's Warhammer. It's therefore, obviously, Warhammer Sunday. Welcome one and all. If you've not seen one of these before, it's that time of the week when I sit down and do some buildy buildy to build up stuff to be painted later on in the year uh, for various video builds. And I use this time to, to get all these things built. And we're currently working on a Space Wolves, uh, what they call Combat Patrol. I can never remember the name. Space Wolves Combat Patrol. So we'll be cracking on and carrying on with that today. Uh, before we get going, of course, I do need to do my quick usual shout outs to all the people that make my content possible. First and foremost, my lovely, fluffy, wonderful patrons and channel members who support me every month. They pay the bills, literally put my food on my table. So I have to do a big thank you to them. And also to my corporate supporters, emodels.co.uk and goblingaming.co.uk. Both those stores are your one-stop shops for all your model making and tabletop gaming needs. So do go and check them out. They're awesome. The link's in the description below. Uh, use those links. It tells them I sent you and you get some income from that. And if you would like to support the channel and keep it alive and help that to happen, uh, then consider to becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash model making guru or becoming a channel member by pressing the join button underneath any one of my videos it gives you access to early content ad free content and exclusive content and it also makes you one of the club and i love you a little bit more i love all my children but just some more than others but yes there you go now as always this is one of my streams so there is a live chat i've got the live chat here in front of me on the ipad of happiness <clears throat> I said happiness. Uh, so I've got my chat on the iPad. If you want to catch my attention, I've got it here. I want to have my goggles on to see what I'm doing. I won't be able to read that very easily. So do please put your comments in big fat capital letters if you want to catch my attention. Uh, or if you want to, you can you can do at Model Making Guru and that'll put my name in an orange box so I have a chance to see it. It'll stand out. Or you can do a super chat by clicking on the little dollar symbol at the bottom of the chat window. That also puts your comment in a coloured box and I can't possibly miss your comment then. Something animates up here, the thing animates up there as well. So there's no way for me to miss your comment then. Uh, but other, otherwise you can just do in capitals or stick my name at me. Like uh, Timothy Calarco just did there. So yes, uh, if you are watching this and you can't see the live chat, uh, then just simply click on the YouTube icon at the bottom right hand corner of the video player if you're watching it embedded somewhere else. And that will take... just. Just give me one second, I can hear a banging downstairs. One second, I'm going to put you on hold for one moment. I'll put you on hold. Sorry, but I don't know what that was. I could have a banging downstairs and I'm like, what the hell is that? But I don't know what it was. I've been the neighbours, I suppose. Anyway, what's talking about? Yes, if you're watching this embedded somewhere like Twacebook or Fitter. Twacebook or Fitter. Hang on, beverage. Twacebook or Fitter. That's a great start, Fox. Facebook or Twitter. Uh, then click the YouTube icon. It'll take you to the YouTube page where you can join in the live chat. I can still hear it, but it must be a window banging or something. Anyway. <clears throat> I need to clear my throat already again. Hang on. <coughs> right. Ah, it's going to be one of them days. Have a quick look and see who we do have in chat. I'll whiz through really quickly. Uh, we have Wendy Hickson was the first one in, except she isn't because she's first thing she says is hello to Pascal the Averse. So I can't see his comment, but I assume Pascal was the first one in. So hello, Pascal. Welcome to Pascal and to Wendy. Uh, Timothy Calarco is in. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Lynn Dipple puts a billion smileys and hugs in there, but no one's clicked OK to it because it was held for review. So welcome to Lynn. Lots of hugs back. Uh, Timothy Calarco. We've got Nim Cinder in his in. Afternoon, everyone. Welcome, Nim. Uh, Plastic Monkey's in as well. Welcome to you, my friend. Uh, Johnny is in. Welcome, Johnny. Uh, Timothy is experimenting with Games Workshop contrast paints. Uh, let's have a look. Max McGinn is in. Welcome to you, Max. Carl at Making Models. Hello, my friend. Welcome, old matey. Old matey? That sounds like a really crap aftershave, doesn't it? New from Ronco, old matey aftershave. New for 1978. Yes. Makes the women run. Away. Dad at Scaly Models is in, one of your uh, lovely, lovely moderators. Soft and fluffy and light like a summer breeze, but if you cross him, he'll bury you underground with worms while you're alive. So don't cross the mods. Uh, we have Panzer Koenig is in. 
Who else has come in? Let's have a look. Uh, Fester, Colin at Fester 67's workshop is also one of your moderators, and same as Dad. Soft and fluffy, but will kill you if needed. So don't cross them. Welcome to you, Colin. Fester and Dad hugs all around. Uh, let's have a look. Who else has come in? Since there? Anybody else come in? La, 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 la. Everybody's talking away. Cy Reynolds in. Welcome, Cy. Another one of your moderators. Uh, also fluffy and lovely. Yada, yada. Kill you if you cross them. There you go. So welcome, Cy. Hello, hello, hello. Good to see you back in circulations. Arsenal Womble is live. Prepare your face holes, says Re says Cy. Thank you. Yes. Uh, let's have a look. And, uh, Timothy Calarco. Are they all... Are they... Well, I'll start again. Are they all Womble Primaris, says Timothy. Um, they're all Primaris, and they've all got actual... You can't really see on because Guthorm's in the way. But they've actually got wolf heads. Andy Sutherland printed me a load of wolf head helmets. Fenris pattern helmets, almost. They're kind of slightly knockoff Fenris pattern helmets. But, and they're a little bit too small. You wouldn't actually be able to fit your head inside them. But it doesn't matter because they look cool and I don't care. So, <laughs> yes. Uh, okay, I got Fox on the big telly and Lego on my lap. Working from a big tin, says Lynn. Oh, I'm working on the lost but found under my chair bag one. Yes. Uh, Wayne Haywood is in. Welcome to Wayne. Uh, Bobbins 9000 as well is in and that's everyone in chat I think so far uh, have a look who was talking about contrast paints oh yeah Timothy was saying he's experimenting with contrast paints I based my hard blasters in dark angel green then went over them with a dry brush of angel green aka Caliban green uh, the effect is pretty good yeah contrast paints are um, they're intended for like people who are just starting out and don't know how to paint as a quick way to get colours on things but even to people that know what they're doing with paints, they've got their uses. Um, I wouldn't personally use them on their own, but I've, I have used them for other things. I used them when I did my uh, Matalan Fridge Raider, my Atalan, Fridge, uh, Atalan Ridge Runner, you know, the, the Gene Stealer vehicle. When I did that, I wanted to get a Borderlands effect and I wanted to get a Borderlands Metallics, which is basically just grey. There's no Metallics in Borderlands. So, uh, to paint all the metal parts, like the, the roll cage and stuff, I just use some of the greys, like I use Griff Charger Grey, and uh, some of the other ones that I can't remember, and just use those. And when, when you paint them on with just a, a white primer underneath, they kind of look like uh, the way that they do metallic colours and, and, and things in Borderlands, in the original Borderlands. Just different shades of grey. And with an ink outline over the top, it looked brilliant. So yeah, I quite like using those. I don't know if I, I wouldn't I wouldn't use them myself personally for like bases and stuff, but I would find a use for them. They do have their uses. They're like really thick inks. Think of them that way. Uh, but they are good for beginners if beginners are just trying to start to get into. If if somebody's brand new and they don't know how to paint, but they just want to get something coloured in and on the table, then it's on, yeah to play. Then it works. Anyway, yes, we are going to be cracking on with the Space Wolves uh, Battle Combat Patrol. I keep I'm so used to calling it. Um, start collecting sets that I've not quite got used to what are they called not uh, combat patrols I keep wanting to call it battle ready but that's just the paint uh, yeah it's anyway we've we've built um dingle dangle wolf's mane wolf to wolf wolf the the the, the lieutenant um we've built these 10 intercessors we've not finished them yet i've started putting on the shoulder pads the uh, the uh, pauldrons on friday so i've still got little accessories to stick on but they're all roughly assembled when these are done i've got the five um reavers to build and then that's this done then and we can move on to the next thing which will be death guard yes and i've also built the um stompy stompy my first gundam but they're all stored away in a in a storage box at the minute so we're working on these intercessors uh let's have a quick chat i like the idea of twice book and fitter yes uh, dad of course asks the most important question with no prompting from me what's on your bench and what's in your belly what are you working on right now what cunning beautiful things are you building or drawing or painting or uh, you know combining together what are you making uh, and also uh, what are you eating what are you going to have for your dinner or what have you had for your dinner uh fenris pattern helmets are cool af though says timothy they are but you only ever get like one in the extra set or hidden away here and there, which is no use at all. Uh, so I, I, I say Andy Sutherland printed me a load of these off. They're not quite, the, they're not exactly the same as the Fenris pattern helmets. They don't look exactly the same, but they look kind of awesome. So I like them. I've got a whole tub of them up. Yes. They look like, you won't really see it, but if I hold this, I, I prime this one in Death Guard Green so you can see it a bit better maybe, but you can't because it's not in focus. But you get the idea there. It's like a, like a wolfy head. You've got the snarly mouth at the front and the pointy ears. 
you can't you can't see it on this camera it's a crappy webcam but you get the idea you get the idea so i've got many many of those so what we're going to do today i can tell you, is all the little tiny details to quote ELO, all the tiny little details. Uh, Graham McRobert, hi Fox, sitting in the sun watching your show. Oh, I'm sitting in not the sun, but I can I can see the sun outside and I can feel the cool breeze from my window and I can smell I can smell the urban gardens, the, the suburban gardens, all the mowing lawns. And it, yes, as yet nobody outside is cutting their grass. Thank goodness. Do do fully expect to suddenly me to swear because I can't close the window. The camera's in such a place that I can't lean over and close the window without knocking the camera. So if a lawnmower starts next door or next door but one or somewhere, we're kind of knackered. <sighs> right, so, uh, yes, it's accessory time. We have to learn to accessorise. Uh, la, 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 la. Timothy's stealing the older helmets and shoulder pads from his tactical marine box. Uh, I do have a whole mess of sp uh, classic uh, Mark II or three Womble helmets that uh, Andy Sutherland also printed for me. But I'm saving those because one day I want to make a squad of angry marines. So, yes. I need to save them for potential future angry marines. Uh, so we need to do, I've done, all the weapons are drilled out. They've all, on Friday when I was hanging out with Colin, I managed to somehow finish doing all the arms and weapons of two dudes and clean up and mount eight backpacks. Which is amazing for me in, in three hours. Uh, so them all done. It's now I've done a few little purity seals. So now it's just a case of cutting off lots of little doodads and doohickeys and purity seals and sticking them all willy-nilly, willy-nilly. Uh, so I shall get some bits cut off the sprue and then we should lots of little bits of clean up and then we shall see where we go. And what I'll have at the end of it is a big pile of little bits that I don't stick on that I'll just have to figure out something. I'll put them in my little bits box basically and have millions of little bits. That's the way I like to do it, is just cut everything off and then you know figure it out later so i'm assuming all the bits on the sea sprues because this is this is it's a, a box standard pack of primaris combined with a, a box standard pack of reavers and then a box standard or well, well four box standard space wolves upgrade sets so i'm assuming all the primaris um these things i've forgotten the word already i've just intercessors that's it god all the intercessor sprues are spruce c there's four c sprues so i'm assuming all the little greebles on the c sprues are for intercessors and i'm not going to have to mix and match so i'm just going to cut all the bits off on the c sprues you do this will not be a very exciting show because it's just me doing little tiny details uh what else have we got any purity seals? i think that everything on this sprue this is all pauldrons and bonces now uh, not that I need any of the bonces. No, no, none at all. There we go. Cool. So where's the other 500 sea sprues? Uh, we have uh, weapons in holsters. We have sidearms. Weapons in holsters and sidearms in thingies. So anyway, how is it? I hope you're all well. Today is Sunday, of course. And being Sunday, it's lovely and sunny outside. I could potentially go and sit in the garden later, except when this finishes, I've got to go make the tea. Mm. Do the washing up. Mm. And then I've got to have my dinner. Mm. And then it'll be, by then it'll be evening time and cold. Mm. My life is exciting. So, <clears throat> hope everyone is well today. Hope you all had a, a good weekend so far. If you've not watched anything else from me throughout the week, uh, I have been very busy this week. Uh, I have been doing the finishing touches to the X-Wing backlog. Uh, I have been filming the uh, Tabletop Trauma Center Lehman Russ. Yes, that is back on again. I'm filming the last, the last, or potentially, well, hopefully last, but more likely pen penultimate episode, which is just the weathering. Because I've got all the weathering to do, and I've got to paint the figure, and I don't know if I can get all of that into one episode yet. You can't see what I'm doing, by the way. I'm cutting things off sprues. So, I'm filming that. I've also completely reorganized my workbench. It's now a million times bigger uh, than it was this time last week, which is why I've got a lot more space to do. I've got all my sprues on the bench now without filling up half the bench is great. So I've got a million more feet of stuff. All I did literally was take my spray booth, fold it away and put it under the bench. Because that end of the bench over there, from kind of here onwards that you can just about see, was just completely taken up with spray booth which I've, i don't use that often i use it occasionally but the majority of the time it's just sitting there taking up space 
and I thought, well, I need to I need to start wondering, figuring out what I'm going to do for this X-wing because I've got my big X-wing to do, and it's massive. It's like 65 inches wide and 75 inches uh, centimeters wide and 75 centimeters long. I kind of need more space, but I can't get a bigger bench. So I realized, followed the tip from our friend Colin over at Festa 67's workshop. And just thought, you know what, I'll, I'll pack it away under the bench. The compression stuff is still all there. That's, that's underneath the bench anyway, so it makes no difference. All I've literally done is just store away the spray booth bit. So when I need to use it, all I literally need to do is get it out, plug it in, connect the extractor hose, which is still where it was, uh, and I'm away to go. It'll take me literally a minute or two. No hassle at all. But I gain a load of extra space. So now I can easily fit uh, one X-Wing length or, you know, an entire Dodge Charger on this bench, no problem. Although, to my horror, even with this extra space, I mean, about here, there's probably another a foot behind this. Well, maybe not a foot, but that far. But that far behind my iPad is still desk space. It's still not wide enough for the X-Wing when it has all the wings attached to the fuselage because the X-Wing is 65 centimeters wide. Wow. The X-Wing is as wide as the Dodge Charger will be long. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and that Dodge Charger is big, man, so. Yeah. So at least I've sorted my bench out now. I've got loads more space. I feel much better about it. It's kind of messed me lighting up a bit because I've, I've been able to put the lights further away, but then it comes, that means I've now I've got lights further away, but it's all right. I've been able to get all the, all the, uh, Hobby Zone units that were behind me at the other end of the room. If you ever watched me do a live stream on the on the models on a Monday, behind me you'd see all the Hobby Zone uh, drawer units stacked up on a little table. Uh, they're now on the bench on the corner where the, air, the spray booth used to be, outside of the area of the cutting mat. So that's quite nice. All those bits are to hand, and I can get more Hobby Zone units on top of those now as well if I want to. I basically had eight Hobby Zone units stacked up, but now I've got them in groups of two. So. I can get more. I need more. Yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing how much just yeah, a bit of a tidy up in a rearrange. And it, it changes your whole outlook. Because I'm one of those people that, for various reasons, I can lose my mojo very easily. Not that I'm going to go into, but yeah, various reasons. I can lose my mojo like that. Gone. And it's very hard for me to get it back. I have to just sometimes wait it out. You know, do other things or play video games or whatever. Because I know if I, if I try and force working, if I try and force it at the bench, I'll just do a bad job because it's a grudge build or a grudge paint then. And, um, you know, it just doesn't work. So, I was going through a bit of a, bit of a slow patch. I was like, oh, because I've, I've been trying to get that Lehman Rust done for various reasons. It's not been happening. And then when I did get time to do it, because I've got so frustrated by not being able to finish it, uh, it'd been so long since I'd done it, and it was so many things getting in the way of doing it that I was like, oh, I've lost my mojo for it now. But tidying the bench just instantly brought that mojo back because it's like, it's like getting a new car. You know, your new car is no different to your old car. It goes forward, it goes backward, it turns corners and it drives around. That's what it does. It does exactly the same thing. But you just feel kind of energised and reinvigorated. It's kind of weird. It's kind of weird. Now, I don't know what I can take from the from the Space Wolves sprue because I don't want to take stuff from the Space Wolves sprue if you need to go on the reavers. So it does say all the extras. These are sprue B, aren't they? So I've got five reavers to do. Uh, okay, so the B sprues are that one, that one. And then this is the A sprue. Okay, so that, uh, that one and that one. Those are both A sprues. Hockey docky. I can put them to one side. It does say I can use the B sprues, but I don't want to fill these guys full of stuff, Space Wolves icons and bits and bobs, and then find when I get to my Reavers, I've got nothing. So the Reavers. Uh, it says I can use all the same B parts and extras from D. 
Okay. So let's have a think now. I don't. I say I don't know what bits I've got. So let us consider. Let us sit and discuss important things that men do. Uh, I shall. I shall activate a second containing device. Look, base! How low can you go? I shall activate this second containing device. Actually, it's going to be a pain to get things out of that, isn't it? Uh, I shall activate this second containing device. There you go. Okay, cool. I can go back over there. I'll put... Do I need that pauldron for anything? I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll put it in here. There we go. Right, so I shall put them back in there. I don't need them. They're the basis for tip weavers. I'll have a look and chat in a second, by the way. Uh, I'll get all those little extras off here, just so I can quantify how many I've got them. Because what we'll do is we'll clean these up as we go, as we need them, as we go. And anything I don't use, I'll put into my space walls bits box. And by bits box, I mean bag. Bobs. Yeah, there's lots of little tassly tails and things. I can oops, stick onto Bell with a little lucky charm. I don't say lucky charms, then you know they're not superstitious. <laughs> they're, they're not, uh, did I just say that? They're not superstitious. Let's just look at the whole Imperium of Man. Yeah, they are. Uh, so that can go there. Was I supposed to have a man unsheathing his weapon? <laughs> I didn't use him. Ugh. That's just rubbish. I can use him later. That's cool. Uh, all those, and we've got all of these. So we've not got a lot of the little icons and things to use, but the uh, ping. And now that one's just pinged off somewhere. We've got even less of them to use. <laughs> oh, awesome. There it is. Found it. It kind of pinged backwards. I don't quite know how it did that. That can go there. Now I do have my own little stash, tiny little stash of space wolves bits as well. But I don't know what I've done with them. I don't know where I've put them. Uh, let's, I might have to go under the bench and have a look. Uh, thing there. Just like little, little, some of them are little icons and some are just like a water bottle, but it's got a little icon on it, so. Right, I'm going to go under the bench. Under the bench. And see if I can find my other little... If I've got any more little bits and bobs. So I'll still talk to you. I ain't going nowhere. Hang on a minute. Let me just... Oh, right. Hang on. I've got a gammy knee as well, so I can't really bend down very easily. Hey. Hey. What's that? That's Tempest of Sounds. We don't want that. Hey. Uh, oh, perpage. Oh, I've got a whole box of Sions and these. I think that means I've built a lot of Tempest of Sions. Oh, I really should paint them all. Boom. One bits box. I've got many bits boxes. Put that there. <sighs> yes, I've got like an enormous box of Scions bits and then a bag of Scions bits. It's like, yeah, I've built, I've built too many Scions. Right, so we have. Let's have a look. Let's have a look and see what we've got. Hang on. Let's see what the good doctor has in his magic bag. I'll have a quick look at chat before we have a look. Uh, I've got the chance. Lynn Dipple. Oh, I'm, dis I'm dedicating this Lego Space Shuttle build to Dad for his birthday. Uh, awesome. Happy, oh, yes. Happy birthday to Dad. I didn't realise it was Dad's birthday today. So, Scaly Models. Happy birthday. Big Dad birthday hugs. What did you get me? Uh, it's kind of handy then, because uh, I'll, I'll tell you, Dad, Dad came round the other day. When I was doing my, when I was doing the, uh, the, the uh, I can't get my words out, the preview, the premiere on Friday, I was late to the chat because Dad turned up, pre-arranged of course, I've got no Space Wolves bits at all, that was a complete waste of time, I've got a Forge Wheel bits pack, and I've got some extras, leftover bits from the Storm Wolf, that was a complete shambles, hold on, <laughs> yes Dad came round, uh, because he was collecting that old, um, Toolbox that I had behind me for a long time. 
Uh, I don't know about these. These are all these are Horus Heresy ones, but they're just equally as usable. But they're more for vehicles. And I do have an Imperial Knight that I was going to do as a Space Wolves Knight, so I might actually not use these. I might use these on my knight and stuff. Und also vehicles. Uh, although that one there, there's a skull with crossbones, but with the entire crossbones is missing. Just no, I don't mind. Uh, yeah, a lot of flash cleanup required on those. So yeah, I won't use any of those. So I didn't need to go under the bench. Anyway, yes, Dad came round on Thursday, Friday. I'll use some proper words in a minute. Dad came round on Friday and collected uh, that big storage box and a load of paints and stuff. So it's kind of handy that it's his birthday today because that can count as his birthday present. There you go, Dad. Happy birthday. Like a billion Tamiya paints. Hi, Fox. Sitting up. We've done that one. Uh, I might have fought, bought four old D8 upgrades and four primaries. Cool. Uh, Lindipple says, Belly brown sugar and maple oatmeal. I need to go to the store and get milk, bench, or a lap tin of Lego Hubble telescope. Hubble. Belly, a beer going down nice, says Graham Robert. But if a beer in it. And again, it's quarter past three. It's not so bad. Afternoon in the garden with a beer. Uh, Max McGinn, belly later tonight. I'm having chicken chasseur with some roasted potatoes and bench. Currently painting up my Imperial Guard heavy weapons team. Three times last cannons and six times mortar guys. Lol. Yeah, I like painting Imperial Guard. They're nice and easy. Wayne Hayward, bench, basing of the Wild West Exodus posse, belly, roast chicken lunch, nice, Johnny, bench, finishing my F104G, belly, leftover extra pepperoni and ham and sausage pizza from last night. Mayhem Model Works, hello Mayhem, welcome my friend, is having a massive wibble as he's back at work tomorrow, have you got the massive back to school blues? I hate that, I used to hate that when I used to work, <laughs> burpage, when I used to, oh, ooh, sober noodles and tuna, mmm. Happy memories of about two hours ago. Yeah, when I used to like have a day job and used to get like a bank holiday weekend or something. And you'd have three or four, or you'd just have leave for whatever reason. You'd have a few days off and you'd have that big, massive back to school blues the day before you went back to work. Oh. Especially if it was a Sunday, because then it was like being back at school. Uh, Cy Reynolds says to Lynn, when you've built it, you must boop the snoot of the shuttle. Absolutely. It is a boopable snoot. It is a snoot designed for boopage. It is a boopity snoot. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Sarah Jane is in. Welcome, Sarah Jane. She had sausage and egg sarnies and salmon with new potatoes and later with vino collapso. Ah, the best vino. Welcome, my friend. What is the best tube to shape into a love heart as it's for red arrow display team diorama? What is the best tube? Tube. Uh, you mean like a like a plastic tube? You mean to make? Do you mean as to make like a? I'm not quite sure what you mean by what's the best tube. What's the tube going to do? Is it going to be the thing that the planes are mounted to? Um, in which case, if it's to actually mount the things to, you're probably better with brass rod. Possibly, you can't really bend tubes. Physics makes that really really hard. Uh, you're better with solid rods. It's easier to bend a solid rod than it is a tube. You can't really bend tubes. They're not designed to be better. Not easily. Well, you can. I'm talking rubbish. You can bend them. But you have to. It's more work to bend a tube than it is a solid rod. If you're making like a frame to mount them on, I'd say go for something like brass. If they're like typical 172 size or whatever, um, they'll take the weight if you get a good enough brass rod. Brass is just kind of soft enough to. You can bend it by hand. Bend it round something because you want a, something to bend it round. You get it nice and curved. If it is a tube, tubes you have to kind of bend bit by bit. You do it like that, and then you do that bit, and then you do that bit, and you have to slowly work your way. Because if you do a tube too much in one point, it just you, it, it creases and you get a square corner and it snaps. But tubes are more tricky to bend, you see. <sighs> the upstairs neighbor's cat is having a case of the zoomies, it says Timothy. <laughs> yeah, they get that. Uh, but I, I assume you mean like a display base, though, like a, a, a tube to mount them all to. I don't quite know what you mean. Uh, I can hear doing Mac 2 across their apartment floor right now. <laughs> Fox has five reavers to do. We will see and leg, says man. No, I've not even got, I've not even finished the intercessors yet, mate. I've got all these to do yet. We have all the little tiny bits to put on. It's like a meeting, isn't it? It's like a, it's like a union meeting. <laughs> now, the committee's decision, committee's decision is that Friday will be a day in low. 
We'll get a day off on Friday and we'll get a day in lieu for the bank holiday. Is that And that's the committee's decision. Oh, I don't know about that. I want a week off. Oh. It's below 16 degrees centigrade. We have to go on strike and leave the office and close the building. Health and safety, health and safety. I used to be a union rep. Civil service in the 1990s, 16 degrees C. If it was below that, it was too cold to work. We were quite good at putting the, the thermometers in places that got very cold, even on warm days. Uh, two seconds ago, there was a pattering of fuzzy feet and a bang and someone yelling the Lord's name in vain. <laughs> yeah. Cats. Uh, who else has come in? Uh, Chris at Gross Models apparently has come in. Oh, there he is. There he is. I see people saying hello to him. Welcome, Chris. Hello, hello. Uh, I'm just randomly selecting text. Timothy Kalaka, Mrs. Owning Cats. I don't have a cat. The uh, Quanaman Dan is in. Welcome to you. Uh, I've missed. I got a Gundam for a fox, says Dan. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. When he when he opened up the big metal boxes that I sent him, there may have accidentally been a Gundam in there. I can't remember which one it was. It was an SD one. Which one it was. Uh, I've missed a lot of chat, so I'll skip forward. Uh, oh, my God, that flash. It's horrendous, says Siren. Oh, you mean on them? Yeah, it's like a block of resin. with. The th yeah, I know. For context, they should have no background. I know. I, I mailed them and said, is this normal? They went, it's normal. It's just a thin layer of flash. Just trim around it. Okay. Mm, I'm going to jump forward because we'll be doing chat all day if I don't. I bought a gadget to properly bend brass tubing. I'll see if I can find a description of it. It's probably a tube bending machine. A bending brace or something like that. Yeah, you can you can bend tubing. I kind of misspoke. You can bend tubing. It's just a lot more hard work and careful work than just bending at a solid rod. Uh, you're silly. Community meeting, says Lynn. Candy, is it called a hammer? Eon's car is in. Welcome, my friend. Right, let's crack on and do some work. So I've got lots of little bits to build. Uh, so we have, let's have a look, we've got ten of these guys. Now I think one of them I've already put a little flippy floppy wolf tail on somewhere. He's got an icon already, so he can bugger off. Uh, he has Nout. He's got Nout. He's got... Uh, he can have some bits. He's not got a wolfy tail. I'm sure I thought I'd done a wolfy tail on someone. That might have been on Captain Fantabulous, whatever the lieutenant was called, Haldor Ice Pelt. Oh no, there we go. Right, so we've got, what have we got? We've got, we have that. Okay, we have three standard issue pouches with runes attached to them. So there's a pouch and two like little, I don't know, little tiny hat boxes. We have, Two fluffy tails, three fluffy tails. We have another pouch with an icon. We have three runes of some sort. And one rune, or three little things, and then one rune on a string. I'm going to give one of these to the Reavers because somebody's already got one of these on somewhere. One of these guys is already wearing. It might be Haldor, Haldor Ice Belt again, I don't know. I'm sure I remember putting one of these on someone. I think I did the sergeant already, and he's got one, so we'll keep that for the reavers. There's five reavers. Three. I don't think reavers would want dangly tail things because they just get in the way. They're being all stealthy. It's, lit. it's, it's like slim down. One, two, three. Ah, oh, slim down. I one, two, three. If I, I'll give all the, I'll give the intercessors the cool stuff. One, two, th three, four. There's not a lot really. Not really a lot I can give them. One, two. This, this is this is the downside of this of this start battle collecting ready pack patrol nonsense. Is that you just you don't get a lot of space wolf stuff. You just get an intercessors with a small number of space wolf doodads to stick on them. It's like yeah, it's not brilliant. So that one already had a room, so we can go over there. Right, so we've got all these to deal with. We've got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and we've got one, two, three, four, five Space Wolf related bits. Fantastic. Yeah. I'm um, still checking the destructions. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're not really getting a lot of. You know what I'm gonna do? You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna give I'm not gonna give the Reavers too many extra special bits because they've they've got a slim, lightweight, stealthy armor. They don't want dangly, sparkly things and noisy things. 
let's one of them has the necklace one of them has a dangly crotch bit if you pardon the expression so i'm going to give the reavers them but i'm going to give everybody else all these bits i really would love it i mean i hope i, I know they're probably going to but i hope one day they do bring out specific primaris space wolf stuff and not just generic primaris dudes that you can add stuff to because that's just rubbish right so we have one two three four five six seven eight how many pistols and sidearms do we have one two three four five six seven eight there you go lovely lots of extra pistols and things now who is actually using a sidearm he's using a sidearm he's already got one I made sure he already read one because he's got one where there's no pistol in the actual holster because that would be stupid because he's got a pistol there so he doesn't need one everybody else is rocking a bolter uh Cy Reynolds says listen here you some of us are slow builders what are we on about I'm assuming you want to emulate the shapes they make with smoke during the dis I don't know what I'm talking about hang on for the red fox, the red arrows do a heart shape with the smoke in the display and want to use cotton wool as the... Oh, right, I've got you. In that case, you want to use um, something transparent and clear. Uh, if, you're, if you're doing... If you're actually lighting it, you could actually use fiber optic cable as the thing to put the... You'd have to kind of wrap... You'd make a wrap of the fiber optic cable or just acrylic rod. If you're looking for something to... If you want to light it, the acrylic wool will carry the light. If you just don't want it to be visible through the cotton wool, then you want to use um, acrylic rod, which you can heat and bend, but it's even more tricky than wire. So, yeah, it's me tricky, that one. Uh, if you're not going to be lighting it, then you can use wire of some sort, but you have to make sure you really cover it in the cotton wool so you can't see it. That's why a transparent clear wire, like acrylic rod, really fine acrylic rod, if you could heat it and bend it, would be perfect, because then you wouldn't see it. Um, but if you can't, if you can't do that... Because you can bend acrylic rod, but you have to warm it up, you have to heat it up. And then, again, you get something like this, and you get your acrylic rod, and you just bend it round it slowly. You wouldn't go like that and bend it. You'd, you'd slowly use this as a former, and you just bend it slowly until you've got the shape you want, kind of thing. In defense of Fox, he has cut some pots off spruce. Thank you. You could get some gardening wire. It's pretty easy to bend, cut, mount, cotton wool to that. Yeah, you could do. That'd be good stuff. Cut a wire or garden wire would be good. Again, as long as you're making the, the cotton wool not see-through, so you can't, you can't see the wire in there. Yeah, why would you want to? You wouldn't want to light it. Smoke, Fox, you idiot. Ignore the bit about lighting it. Uh, only been streaming for 37 minutes. Is that not enough time for Fox to start building? Well, I keep doing all the comments and talking and stuff. Uh, listen here, you. Some of us are slow builders just because you like the fecking A-team in your man cave. Go in with toilet roll and come out with an insane blade. <laughs> Says Ty. To Colin and Colin says you are exempt for not being Fox. Uh, I was joking, of course, but now I'm going to call you Hannibal. Says Sai because the 18 reference was spot on. It's true. Colin goes in with like a, a, a table and a hammer and a little tiny bit of plastic and comes out with like the insane blade. Going to use garden wire. A bit of trial and error. There you go. I'm channeling my inner armourer by colouring the armour for my friend's D&D &D fighter. Went with a really bright silvery colour. Jolly good. Kind of what colour armour would be. Mummy, silvers and golds, really. Uh, uh, right, anyway, so let's get some work done. So let's glue on some gunny bits and things like that. So we can get these little pieces cleaned up. I'll put the little... Uh, I'll, I'll get these done now. I'll just get them all loose and ping them across the desk. That's always a winning strategy, isn't it, Fox? There we go. Now some of these are so small they can just be cleaned up with a blade and not not worrying too much about other fancy things. But let's crack on. Now remember while I've got my goggles down I can't read anything in chat so if you want to get my attention please do uh, either at Model Making Guru in the chat which is always a winning a winning strategy it means I can see the little orange box or you can do a super chat if you want to little press the little dollar symbol at the bottom of the chat window that's super chat and that tells me. Well, it puts a little animation on screen and it puts a big coloured box on your comment as well. So there's no way I can miss it then. Let me scrape your tool. So we'll quickly... That's not going to work, is it? Let me put these in here. 
There we go. Now I know which bits I've done and which bits I haven't. Do I? Do I know? I don't know. I don't know. Right, so let's get these bits done. So, things everywhere. Uh, where are we? What else has been going on this week? So anyway, yes. Yeah, so our dad came to pick up his uh, paints and little storage box and got a free gumpler. I may have accidentally left one in the box, just purely by accident. Uh, I've made the bench bigger. Everything's got bigness. Uh, I can confirm the first two issues of the Dodge Charger from Diego from a fan home are on the way. Yay, they've been shipped. So I expect to see that hopefully very soon. Big thanks to the guys at Fan Home uh, for sending those to me free of charge. Fanhome.com, the home of the licensed Diagostini Park Works. Go and check it out. What else has been going on? Nothing else to report, really. I did some washing yesterday. That's not really anything I want to report, though. Very exciting, is it? I've not quite got used to this new bench layout, so it might look a bit weird with me leaning all the way over in, into weird places, but never mind. I need another... Con I've not got enough containers. Right. I need one for the bits I've not... No, that's going to go down this. I'll put it there. I need one for the bits I've not done yet. And one for the bits I have done. Oops, keep them in there. You know, like when you watch me play Skyrim and it's me just shopping. When you watch me doing this now, it's going to be me just moving things from one pot to another. The excitement. The exciting of moving things. Get all these little uh, holsters, sidearm holsters done first. Oops, she knows. Ew, ew, I say. I was eyeing up your flap earlier, as you know, says Cy Reynolds to Chris. Ew, I don't even want to know. Chris says, ew, ew, I say. Ew, ew. Oh no. We'll have no flap eyeing in the chat, please. Not that kind of party. All the bowls are on my bench here, and not any of them have car keys in, so it's not that kind of party. And the downside of doing these little fiddly bits is I get crampy hands trying to hold all the little fiddly bits. It can get quite crampy after a while. I keep a grip of all these little tiny components. Tiny components. Uh, what else has been going on? Nothing else I can think of has been going on. Uh, nothing of any great import anyway. I started watching a series called Genius on the Disney Channel. Um, it's like an anthology series, and there's two seasons. One is Einstein, and one is Picasso. I don't care about Picasso because I don't consider, I don't consider an artist a genius. I consider them talented artists. But I'm watching the one about Einstein. It's more like it's like a biography kind of thing, probably slightly fictionalized. It's like a ten episode thing, and I can't decide if I like it or not. I, I can't decide if I like the character that plays young Einstein, although he does kind of look like him, which is kind of good. I can't decide if I like it or not. I've, one of those things that I'm still watching it. You know, like, you'll watch something sometimes, you'll be like, yeah, I'm not enjoying this, I don't like this. And you'll know straight away if you don't like it. And then you'll watch something and you'll know straight away if you like it. I can't decide. It's just like a bio, it's like a bio, biography type thing. But it's quite good. Uh, but uh, the first season's about Einstein, the second season's about Picasso, and I'm like, can you consider an artist a genius? I don't, I don't think that works. Because I'm not, I'm not saying Picasso wasn't a talented artist. I'm not saying that to come up with a, you know, an, your own individual unique style of art is not talented or doesn't require intelligence. But to call you a genius, no. Genius suggests great powers of intellect and understanding and cognition. And you don't necessarily need all that for art. You need to have intelligence and, and, you know, cognition, but not, I don't know. I don't see art as something you can be a genius at. I think science, the sciences you can be a genius at and other practical thing. But art, no, I mean, you can be, a, you could be a genius at, say, music. 
I think, because there's a lot of analytical, mathematical stuff in there. But I, I don't know. It just doesn't work. I mean, I, I'm not interested in Picasso anyway. So, but I was like, does it make him a genius? I don't know. I mean, a physicist? Yeah. An artist? A painter? Yeah. You don't need to be smart. I'll say that again. You don't need to be smart to paint well. I do. Don't get me wrong. I do like Picasso's work. I I, I like Picasso. I like his style. I like the the essence of cubism. You don't have to be super smart to come up with it. Especially influenced as he was by you know the vorticists and the Bauhaus movement and the nihilists and others. It's, it's yeah. I don't, don't know if it makes him a genius. So anyway, that's quite good. I'm enjoying that, but I, I, I think I don't know. I can't tell if I'm enjoying it or not. I've not decided yet. I'm about two. I'm two episodes in. And I'm like, uh, I don't know. I'm not hating it, but I'm not. I'm not finding myself jumping onto the next episode button either. I'm like, I don't know. I think it's because it's still in his early days and it's still young Einstein, and it's like, I don't know. We'll we'll see how it goes. Wait till he gets to America and see what happens. Uh, it's not. Of course, it's not really focusing on the physics. It's more a bio uh, excuse me, biology. It's a biographical type thing. Little bits of the physics, but it's not. It's not. Here's. It's not like a learn all about physics whilst giving a bit of information about. It's not. It's. It's literally about Einstein, and the physics is second fiddle to that. So, but it's interesting. But it's some of the some of the accents are like oh, oh you know. Because it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, what do you call it? National Geographic series. And it's like, oh. if you if you're gonna do a if you're gonna do a biopic about primarily Germans and Swiss, because all the characters so far are either German or Swiss, pretty much. You 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 should really not just get a bunch of Americans to do it because they've all got weird, different, completely different accents, and they're like, yeah, you should really. Try and get actors who are actually from that place and can speak with an actual accent when they speak English, that'd be much better. At least you get some consistency. But uh, yeah, it's, it's all right there. It could be worse, it, it could be a lot worse. And they've, they've, they've done all right, I think, given the limitations of. I think it would have been better though. I think it would have been much better. It's one of those things, if you're filming something about, say, for example, characters in. Say Germany or anywhere like that. Do, you, do they all speak with the accent or should they just not have the accent at all? And I would say personally myself, if I was if I was making it myself, I'd probably say to the actors, don't put on the silly accent. Don't try and sound like an Austrian or a Swiss or a Pole. Just just talk. I mean then you do get all kinds of English accents or American accents, whatever. It's like, yeah. But I think it be, it just makes it a little less, I don't know. You can put up with five different English accents from actors. But it's harder to put up with five different pretend German accents or Austrian accents, for example. I mean, that is the weird thing. If you, if you listen to the other languages. Um... I used to know a girl, a German, a good German, I'll say that again. I used to be friends with a German girl, and she was, she was trying to teach me about all the different accents and stuff. She was from Cologne. She was trying to teach me about all the different accents. And I, I, I couldn't ascertain the different accents at all. She's like, you know, this is like this accent, and this is from here, and this is from there. And I'm like, it just sounds like German to me. <laughs> and it makes you realise that in your own language, you know, if you if I hear someone British speaking, I can tell roughly where they're from, usually more or less. But when it's not an English language, of course, I I I would never pick up an accent in a non-English speaking language. I would just I just wouldn't I wouldn't know. But if it's English, I can. But if it's a foreign language, I can't tell if someone's from Paris or Lyon or. You know, uh, Provence. I can't tell if someone's from Cologne or Dresden or Berlin or anywhere. They've all got different accents, but we can't we can't tell them. 
So there, there's some there's some excuse for saying yeah, but all the actors have different accents because they're all from different parts of say Germany or Austria. Yeah, it's just because they're all English speakers trying to be German, but we'll let it off. But anyway, yeah, I can't decide if I like it or not. Anyway, anyway. <sighs> If you haven't done already, by the way, please do give uh, Scaly Models, one of our lovely moderators, lots of big birthday hugs, because it's his birthday today. He's a billion years old, and he needs all the hugs he can get, because it helps him stand upright, because he's that old, you know. So make sure Scaly Models gets all the hugs in the world today, please. So what I've missed this year there is Horizon I love a BBC series called Horizon they've not had any on this year I've missed it I do like Horizon it's one of those series that if you don't know what it is it's basically a science and, and a science and um, news series it's like each each episode is like discussing a particular science thing and the latest developments and stuff um, and they tend to have like if a series of say seven episodes each year one of the one or two of them might be about rubbish like nonsense like here's one episode about i don't know diet or food or something boring here's one episode about i don't know psychological nonsense i don't know some but then a lot of them are about physics mathematics cool and i'm not adding it this year so i've not had a chance to watch any Missed that. I've missed science programming this year. There's not, uh, you know, this last year or so, there's not been a lot of it going on. Most displeasing. No, oh, sure. Oh, yeah. Do, 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 then when I do decide to use them some point down the line, they're ready to roll. Ready to roll. Although I can barely hold them. Never mind clean them up. I can barely... Trying to hold this little tiny piece, I can barely see it. I can't see if there's a mould line. If there is one, I can't, I can't find where it is. I don't know if I can clean it very easily. Yeah. Be fine. What is the next one? Yeah, that's his wish dig. This is a little icon of some sort. Little tiny wolfy skull in a little frame. Which they insist on the frame having little studs halfway along each vertice, vertex and or edge. And the nub is right next to a stud and it's impossible really hard to get the nub gone without taking the stud also the mold line goes right down the edge as well and you can't see any of this because they're so tiny it's not gonna be an exciting episode while i clean up things i've got to use a knife blade here because there's a little sort of rivet halfway along each edge i don't want to have to i think i'm gonna have to do this on the desk hang on i'm doing something i've not done for many years which is actually trim a nub with a knife blade on the bench. My head will be in shot, I'm afraid. There you go. I've not done that for many years. That's how we used to get things off sprue back in the day of stupidity and lack of knowing. I learned something today, by the way. I didn't know this. But um, if you thought that all the Sherlock Holmes stuff was public domain because he's been dead more than 70 years, uh, you're slightly wrong. <laughs> sort of. Sort of. Because it's, it's kind of a well-known thing now that all the Conan Doyle stuff has kind of slipped into public domain now and you can't... You can do what you want with it. However... You still see, occasionally see lawsuits from the uh, the Conan Doyle estate 
apparently in the UK and the rest of the world all the Sherlock Holmes stuff is now slipped into public domain you can you can re rewrite it you can do what you want with it you can use the characters whatever uh, there's no there's no copyright to it in the US though there are still 10 of the stories which are under copyright bizarrely because they've got slightly different copyright laws which is why when you see a lawsuit from the estate of Conan Doyle it's for something in America Uh, that expires in 2023, apparently. So in 2023, if you want to do audio books or, you know, write fiction or whatever, you want to write some new Sherlock Holmes stories, if you're a writer or a, an artist or whatever, you can have at it from 2023 because it'll be public domain everywhere. Everywhere. I think it's like 70 years in the UK, I think it's 100 years in the US, but there's 10 stories that are still technically under copyright. Mm, 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 mm. I predict in the next year or two you'll see a lot of Sherlock Holmes stuff turning up in various places. I talk about random things on my live streams. This is why I need a co-host. <laughs> Yeah, we'll sort that out one day. Just the technical challenge of getting around stream yard. It's another pouch with no really blatantly obvious mold line on it, which is good. Uh, I'll do the audio books model making guru, says Colin. That'd be great. Oh, that'd be awesome. Sherlock got his fiddle out. I walked into the room and he was fiddling in the corner. Yeah. I knew he was the murderer by the tobacco he smoked and left on the tip of his shoes. I know this because in my local shop it's free for a pound. That's what I smoke. Be great. Sherlock Holmes, with an H. The uh, episode one, the hand of the Baskervilles, with an H. It's an hand, isn't it? With an H. <laughs> Sherlock, what is that? It's an hand, isn't it? An hand with an H. <laughs> That'd be fantastic. My God, what's happened in here? What is what is it, Sherlock? It's a dead bloke, isn't it? I, yeah. Right, getting this nub off this little thing here is a right pain in the bum because you end up destroying all the little detail on the... It's like a little gold or bronze cap on the end of the tail and it, to get the nub off you're just butchering the little raised detail so I have to make sure that face is that way because there's no way to avoid that. Which is a shame really. <laughs> when I was much younger I actually had uh, all the Sherlock Holmes stories in a big book and they were taken from as they appeared in the Strand magazine with all the original uh, illustrations from when they were published in the Strand magazine and there were two things that met that struck me first of all firstly was that one of the lines in all honesty one of the lines was some was something like Watson saying something along the lines of from memory I was often woken in the middle of the night by Holmes's ejaculations he means like Holmes will suddenly wake up and shout something out. Is yeah, you know what he means. Innocent times and all that, but it has a whole different meaning today. But the thing that struck me the most is that um, at the time in the UK on, on uh, ITV there was a, a there was a TV series of Sherlock Holmes, and there was an actor called Jeremy Brett that was playing Holmes. And when I got this book. There was one picture uh, in one of the stories. One, it was, they were just illustrated. It was like you get in the Strand magazine in the old days. They'd have the story and then illustration. There was one little black and white illustration. Uh, actually, I, I misquoted that. I think it was. It, I think the exact quote was something like, "I was often aroused by Holmes's unexpected 
middle of the night ejaculations or something like that. It wasn't supposed to mean what we now would take it to mean. Oh uh, yes, one of these little drawings, they're all black and white like woodcut type sketchy magazine drawings from the 18 whatever. One of them looked exactly like Jeremy Brett. Because all throughout the book, the, the, they were all published at different times, so all the little drawings of Holmes looks, you know, different, different artists, different times. But one of them, it, it, I was hard pressed to not believe that the drawing was recent and made to look like Jeremy, but it wasn't. It was like from 1892 or something. And it would literally looked exactly like Jeremy Brett, which was incredibly bizarre because he was the actor currently playing Holmes in the TV series at the time. It was so weird. So weird. Burpage. Mm, sober noodles. For lunch today, I had. I was being lazy, and I was hungry. And I don't often have lunch, but I was hungry. I was being lazy and pushed for time, so I got myself a couple of packets of sober noodles. Just ramen noodles, but they're sober noodles. A couple of packets of sober noodles, uh, chicken teriyaki. So I took. I didn't use the teriyaki sauce, but I just there's like a herb packet and a sauce packet. Uh, I threw the sauce packet away, but used all the herbs. I added in some of my own herbs and spices, and then I just dumped. I, I cooked them all up, and then I dumped in a tin of tuna, tuna in brine. I took the brine out, obviously, got rid of the brine, and uh, it made a wholesome lunchtime snack. It was a very big lunchtime. <laughs> yeah, there's quite a lot of noodles in their packets. It took me. It filled up my bowl quite nicely. So lunch for me was a couple of packs of sober noodles with herbs and spices and the tuna, because tuna's good for you. I'm on a low-fat diet, so tuna's good for me. A good uh, food that scrubs out your bits, if you pardon the expression. And a couple of little bits left. What have we got? We've got a, another little pouch or almost like a little tobacco pouch or something. If it was a fusilier or a rifleman, I'd say, you know, vintage, I'd say it's a powder powder container for their for their musket. But this is, of course, 40k. One of these little uh, icons. See if I can do it on the desk. I know, I know you can't see what I'm doing, but it might be quicker if I try it again. Just use a blade. Just... Off a little bit faster, like I did with the other one, but that one I can get to on camera, the other one I couldn't. Uh, where is it? There it is. Oh, flipping, flipping. That's how we used to get rid of nubs in the old days. When I was a lad, you didn't know better, you didn't have no nippers, no nothing. I wouldn't have even known what a pair of nippers was when I was a kid making models. <laughs> Go on a low chat diet, says Colin. I like, I see what you did there. <laughs> Actually, that, you make that joke, but it would be a good idea because often I get hungry because I'm reading comments in chat. And you guys are all talking about food and I'm like, oh, no, I'm hungry. Either my own chat or somebody else's chat. So, yes, I blame it on, I blame it on Nim. Nim's pictures of, I, I don't know what half of the things in that, I don't know what half the things in that food were yesterday, Nim, but dear God, I wanted to eat them all. Those things on the left-hand side that looked a bit like sausages, but I assume they weren't. No idea what they were, but they looked like I needed to eat them. Quite simply. I quite simply did to eat them in my face. I can hardly grip this. And it's annoying me now. Yeah. I don't want to lose the little rivets, but yeah, I can't I can't grip it in such a way to get rid of the nub. It's not with the camera right there anyway. Also, I've got a runny nose which doesn't help. Hang on. <sighs> Hang on. Oh. Here we go. Oh yeah. These lights come on. It's like being a kid and it's like being a five year old kid at nursery at uh, infant school in the 70s. Instant runny nose. <laughs> I have no memory of that being that young, but I, I don't know if I was like the typical snotty nosed kid or not when I was like four or five years old. I've got no idea. I have to ask Mama Fox. I probably was. How's the stream looking, by the way, guys? Is it looking and sounding okay? 
because I've got this new desk set up, of course, it means my microphone's in a slightly different place. And I think it means it might sound a bit better, a bit less echoey. Now, one thing I haven't got rid of is every time I put something down, you get that kind of boo, which is just the, the springs in the support arm that the microphone's mounted into um, are connected to the workbench. There's no other way I can do it. So, uh, yeah, you do get that, which is a bit annoying. Right, I think that's all the bits and bobs. Not all of them, but most of them. Is it all of them? Not all of them, but we've got a big chunk of them. So it's all the all the uh, sidearm holsters and all the uh, Space Wolfy bits. So let's start putting these on. We'll put that over there. Quick look at chat. Uh, ooh, ooh, pick me, says Mayhem. Oh, I don't know what for. Speaking of art, says Muse. Hey, Muse, Muse is in. Speaking of art, we have some works of Van Gogh in one. Van, I suggest Van Gogh, didn't I? Like an American. Van Gogh in, in uh, one of our museums. Cool. I like Van Gogh. Uh, Phil East is in. Welcome, Phil East. Uh, if you have come in and I haven't said hello, by the way, I'm doing my best to keep up with chat, but I'm not. Lynn Dipple says, sorry for the angry thing. I'm not typing good hand. Keeps hitting the emoji button. Uh, ooh, burpage. It sounds so wrong, but it feels so right, says Chris and Simon. I don't know what's going on there. And Mayhem says, oi, very with the thing and the jumping and the woman and the hay and the hay and the glaive and hey. With the running and the screaming and the dying and the glaive and hay. <sighs> Does that mean Dad is a genius? He's a fartist, <laughs> says Panzer. An artist isn't a genius, says Graham. Yeah, I don't... I, I, just, I was like, Picasso, talented, yes. Innovative, yes. Uh, smart, most likely, probably, yes. Genius, no. A genius invents something, or is a physicist, or is a chemist, or a biologist, or a scientist of some sort. Or, or has a... I don't know. Just, no, arty stuff doesn't really... No. Like I say, music is a bit different because music requires a certain intellect, I think. Whereas art can be done without any specific intellect. Anyway, moving on. Quick look at chat. Um, Detroit Institute of Arts Museum at Scale Model Muse. Fantastic museum visited many times growing up. Sherlock Holmes versus Conan the Barbarian is going to be real soon. Yeah, says LD. Welcome, LD. I've just leveled up my character and I get to take my magic feature for character development, says Nim. Cool. Uh, yeah, provided someone who has the right to reclaim it passes it up, all that money, says Muse. No, with copyright, once the, once the, the creator is passed away, uh, in the UK it's 70 years as soon as the, the artist who created the work has been dead more than 70 years it automatically goes into the public domain whether the estate wants it to or not now I know there's a whole thing about Disney but you know that's because Disney are just an evil fascist corporation but you know they've got the power to change things around but um, yeah no technically under most copyright law after over here after 70 years once you've carked it 70 years later that's it tough shit you, your stuff is public domain you can't do anything about it if it wasn't public domain already right let's glue some things on some other things there we go lovely right so he's got his little icon and he's got a holster so he can go over there goodbye he has nothing 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 i'll just ping it over there to be honest i won't actually put it on him now this is where you get to maybe see me swearing and things because getting these on and not falling off is interesting at best. I don't like to use the extra fat glue because it just gets messy. Prefer just to actually I prefer to get rid of that little mold line for a start, which is always a winner. On his belt. Probably for the best. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I could just use it extra thin, but I, I, I want I want something that's kind of extra thin, but doesn't flash off as quick, if that makes any sense. I need something that's halfway between. Halfway down the stairs. Never mind, copyright. But if I can feed the extra, extra thin under there, pop it back on. Use a tool of some sort. Let me show you my tool. 
Let me show you my large tool to fix your washing machine. Oh no, all my clothes fell off. Welcome to 1970s. Slightly not British porn. Yes. Hello, I've come to fix your washing machine. Oh no, all my clothes fell off. Yeah, that was... Yeah, in the old days, that's what porn was like. It was terrible. <laughs> okay. Gun attached. We'll do, all, we'll do them stage by stage. We'll do them bit by bit. We'll do the, the side arms first. And it's going to vary depending on who's on what pose and what I can get him where. And I can't really get the side arm in there because his arm's in the way. So his side arm will be on this side. You see? Juicy. Like that, you see? Right. Are these all side arms on the same? Are they all the same way around? Or have we got any chirality? Chirality! Are any facing the other way? Are they all facing the same way? They're all facing the same way. There's no options here. You're not allowed to be left or right-handed. You've got to be one or the other. If you're a spesmorine, get that on there. I shall. What I'll do is I'll be clever and just wedge it in place with my finger. That might be a good idea, won't it, Fox? How about that? How about you do that? What that for an idea? How do you like them apples? And then turn it over so it falls off. Yeah, brilliant. There you go. How do you like? Oh no, hang on. There we go. Push it down gently. Lovely. That is now in place. I like painting the things like their little pouches and and uh, holsters because I always paint them in brown. I don't do them in black. I like to paint them in brown. I think it looks more cool if if you paint all the straps and things black. It's it's nice, but they're just kind of black. If you paint them in brown you can do a little bit of like faded leather effects on them more than you can if they were just black dropping roger dropping now can go there fiddly bits fiddly bits fiddly bits Fiddly bits, boom. Yep. Roger, placing now. Placing. Placing now, sir. We just have to hold it in place. I can get to all the relevant bits. Get to your bits. Uh, just level. Oh, yeah, that's what we're talking about. Uh, Graham McRobert, I'm the Scottish drunk in the corner for your story, <laughs> says Graham McRobert. Hey, hey, well. A no nonsense Sherlock Holmes portrayed by Colin would be brilliant. Ooh, that would make him Hemlock Sholmes. <laughs> uh, the, the, the reason I read this was I read it on Kotaku because there's a game coming out, uh, one of the Phoenix Wright ones, and it's got a character called Herlock Sholmes. It's just basically Sherlock Holmes, but they couldn't call him Sherlock Holmes because of the ten copyrighted stories in the US, and the game's going going in the US as well as the rest of the world. So purely because of those ten stories, they couldn't do anything. But from 2023 or four, I think. Also, we're from 2024, I think. Um, the first round of Disney stuff comes out of copyright. Now, not everything comes out of copyright. Assuming Disney can't stall anything anymore. Um, but it means things like, theoretically, like the earliest incarnations of Mickey Mouse, like Steamboat Willie, technically would come out of copyright because they're 100 years old. Uh, like I said, unless Disney can somehow pay people a lot of money and lots of backstreet deals, which they've done before. But... There's only so far they can go before copyright law is just like, you know what, it, it's the law. You're not going to get around it. It's now open to everybody. So it wouldn't mean carte blanche that you can suddenly use Mickey Mouse everywhere, but it means that, for example, that specific incarnation of Mickey Mouse, i.e. Steamboat Willie, whatever it's called, that would be out of copyright. Technically. Technically. Then again, the House of Mouse is quite powerful. I'll probably be, I'll probably be taken out and I'll probably disappear and die and be buried in the Mojave Desert by you know this time next week because I've said all that. Uh, 
uh, more rambles than a jar of brambles, says Mayhem. And Quantum Man says to Cy Reynolds, or oh, Cy Reynolds says, uh, it looks fine, sounds fine, still full of rambles as ever. And Quantum Man says, that's because Fox has such a big desk, you can walk all over it. And that's the last time we'll talk about Fox's big one. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Billy is having plenty of fun with acrylics for this damn Mustang Red, but it's time to go back to the old faithful Tamiya paint. Yes. Inspector Ohms, says Mayhem Model with an H. Too far, Fox, says Gray McRobert. What, what did I do? I don't know what I did. Festa says, I'll send you up some Festa Thin. Send me some empties, Duda, says a model making guru. Oh, is it, is it like, does it take longer to cure? A little bit longer? I've, I've just thrown an empty jar away, and I've, that one's full. I haven't got an empty one yet. I'll find an empty one. I'll send one up next time I empty one out. I've just thrown one away as well. Sod's law. Uh, that would mean you actually gluing bits together so you run out first. Yeah. LD's looking forward to starting the baby night later on. Yeah, he's just built one of the. Uh, he's got the um, Titanicus Imperial Knights. If you're not familiar with the Titanicus game, it's basically Warhammer 40k, but just for the Titans, like for your Imperial Knights and your Warhound Titans and your. Imperator Titans and stuff, but it's done at a different scale because of the size of some of the Night Titans and the other big Titans. Um, you can, if you're familiar with Forge World, you, you know you can get the Imperial Knight from Games Workshop and it's like a foot tall, uh, and you can play it on the tabletop. And you can from Forge World, from Games Workshop, sorry, and from Forge World, you can buy big resin, you know, uh, Warhound Titans and the big massive titans you can get them and play them on the tabletop on the standard game but there's a specific game uh called titanicus i think it's called where you're just playing with purely with titans and what they've done is the imperial knight is the size of the space marines the imperial knight's that big and then all the other titans are scaled precisely and you get little tiny buildings for, to play around and uh, it's a whole different game rule set and stuff but they look adorable they really do little tiny tiny imperial knights like, you know, the big, massive uh, uh, Imperator Titan. No, it's not the Imperator Titan, but some of the massive, like, War Master Titans and stuff are of the size. The actual model is about the same size as an Imperial Knight model. But, of course, they're, like, ten times the size of an Imperial Knight, so... An Imperial Knight is the size of a Space Marine. But yeah, those little tiny knights look so adorable. Ah... Uh... I sometimes paint the gun holster on straps on Mechanica start again. Max McGinn says, I sometimes paint the gun holster or straps in Mechanica standard grey washed with Nolan to give a textured effect. Yeah, that would, that's what I would do. There's a very loud helicopter going overhead. Sounds a bit uh, not civilian. Yeah, that's not civilian, that. I mean, I don't mean, it, I mean, it's not the police or the local. That's... Uh, I think that's probably army that anyway uh, yes what i'm talking about yes if i'm if i'm stop dropping things if i if i was going to be giving them black straps and holsters i would do exactly that i'd do them at a dark gray first or at a medium gray and then shade it with normal oil to get it up to black you never just want to paint something black because if you paint something black how do you then put any dark areas in it you can't all you can do if you paint something black is highlight it and that's that's half of the fun gone then if i was doing say like you do like black straps and, and pouches and things i'd do the same i'd use a oh, it's going to fall off i'd use a, a medium gray first and then shade it exactly what i'd do kind of thing when you're doing anything dark black like that because there will be times when you need to do things like black straps and thing and things and uh technically that little pouch is floating off the off the end of his belt but never mind we'll, we'll We'll just assume there's some kind of magical 40k nonsense going on there that makes all that work. Right, so that's all the holsters. Yeah, so if you do anything black, don't just paint things black. Like straps and anything like that, don't just paint them black. Paint them dark grey and go from there. Now, this is where the fun begins with the little fluffy tails, because these are a pain to apply, because you've got a little tiny contact point. Yes. 
So let's pick three at random. We'll pick that guy. We'll have this guy because he's he's waving a pistolium. We'll have this guy with the stability knife. Do we want that guy? Is that guy just boring? We'll have the guy. We'll have the guy. We'll have the people that are doing interesting things, having interesting bits. So we've got grenade dude, pointing uh, gun dude, brap dude, reloading dude, and stability dude. Ah, well, I've only got three things. So, uh, yeah, we'll yeah we'll give him a, a triangle thing. All right, so uh, and it's two hundred and fifty feet, Fox, the scaly models. Hang on, it's a Babcock. I in, start again. It's a Babcock inland helicopter, Fox, and it's two hundred and fifty feet. What's a Babcock inland helicopter? You're looking it up on the um, the flying things, aren't you? Cool. It didn't sound from it didn't it didn't sound familiar to me. I don't think I've heard it before. It sounded more like a some of the like full on search and rescue or the army ones that we see here occasionally. Did not at all sound like the usual police uh, India 99 or whatever it's now called. I'm going to cheat with this one a bit and kind of wedge it into where that little corner is there, the holster. Yeah, you're doing your watching what's happening in the airport thing, aren't you, Dad? Oh, that's gone wrong. It was the right way around then, and then it rolled. Oh! Tasks me, tasks me, and I shall have it. I should really just use the fact loop, shouldn't I, really? It needs to look like it's hanging off his belt, which is really tricky because you've got a tiny little contact point. I don't want it sticking out like a great big wedge, though, because that just looks rude. Although it's kind of got some dynamism to it. Yeah, we'll keep that. We'll keep that. It'll probably snap off in transit. Looks like it's flapping around. That'll do. I'll put him there, though, so it can sit like that. Uh, where can this one go? This one can have it in here, you see? Like there, actually, see? Could use the fat cement, that might be a bit easier. I don't like putting these on with tweezers though, because with tweezers you tend to put it in place and then it wiggles around as you try and get it off the tweezers. So it can be quite tricky. Don't like using the big fat cement just because it makes a mess. But it does give it a bit more stickity sometimes. As soon as I let go of that, it kind of pushes it. Right, just gently nudge that there. Nudge. And then somehow try to wash some extra thin over it without dislodging it. And it can be a pain to get on these things. Because just the slightest touch of extra thin can dissolve the fat cement and, and, and the whole thing just comes off straight away. So we'll put him there. There we go. Is it one more to do? One more. I think I shall have this chap having it dangling off his uh, off his jet packings, which makes no sense at all because it would just burn to a crisp with the outgassing of his thruster pack. Although I have to say, I think they I assume, I know it's a power pack that they wear. It's not a jet pack, it's actually a power pack. But I assume that the things on the sides are actual thrust nozzles, so it can be used like a jet pack. I don't know. I've never quite had that answered satisfactorily. Cy Reynolds will know. Is the backpack, aside from being a power pack, is it also a pain in the ass to get on? Is it also a jet pack? Are they like thruster nozzles, or is that not going to go on at all? It's not going to go on at all there, is it? No. Let's just put it there then. Jam it into that corner. Jam it. Does it double up as like little thrusters, or is it just vents for the for the power pack? Somebody will know. Somebody can use their big boy words to tell me. That's not going to stay on there, is it? If I do it now, let's just jam it in there. Because they look like jetpacks, but and I know they've got the little thrust nozzles on the side, 
I know the big round ones are probably thrusters, so they probably are like limited. They're like jump packs or something, I guess. They're not on full on jet packs like you get in the uh, in the in the whatever the big ones are called, the inter interocitors or whatever they are. Put that there. Let him dry for a bit. And they've got the two big two bell shaped ones. These two things, that one and that one. They're like thrusters, but these. I, so I assume they are like limited range jet packs. I'll just shut up now because somebody just answered me in chat already. The helicopter has landed at the side of the Manchester Ship Canal near Carrington Fox. Oh, cool. Is it private? Though? I don't know what it is. It's probably private then, isn't it? Uh, so I was trying to break in early and he ran downstairs, so I had to run and hide, says Dad. <laughs> Dad will do anything to get a mum a fox hug. Flight radar, it's an air ambulance, says Dad. Cool. Didn't sound like it as normal. Dad, are you still hiding in Fox's bushes? <laughs> Steady now. Rude Marines, lol. Oh, because the bloke with this bit of sticky, he's got a bit of a wedge action going on. They see him from the side, he's like, oh, hello. Little bit rude. Little bit rude. He's got his big blade. He's got his... <laughs> you can see my big weapon. Yeah, it's my big weapon. It's moving on. Moving on now. Uh, air ambulance. I think the back of the backpack is where the coolants where vents are. Says Max McGinn. Well, I, th I think they are like those are thruster bells, so they can go a little bit. But I assume with these guys, they're actually just jump packs to make them like for little blips. They're not like flying around jet packs. I assume. I don't know. Because an often it's referred to as a power pack. So yes and no. They are thrust nozzles to assist in movement on planets whose only gravity is exceptionally high. They don't generally provide lift. However, there you go. Then Cy Reynolds knows all the things about the things that you need to know. Thank you very much, Cy Reynolds. Right, so what have we got next? Box this goes there, that goes here. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, right. No, 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 that goes there, that goes there. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I can't do a good Chewbacca impression. He's got a widget on him already. Uh, this guy's got a holster, and he's, all, he's already got a purity seal on his backpack. Beep, 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 beep. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we can give them all something, I think. Uh, I think he, because he's in an awesome pose, he's like, brat muffer fluffers. He's like, don't give me no nonsense. I know it's not in focus. But brat, he's looking down the barrel of his pistol while he's firing it, all gangster style, sideways. He's like, brat. So he can have the little uh, lucky charm thing. Oh, there's two of them. Okay. Well, he can have one of them anyway. Brap M8RS. But by the same token, they are vents to aid with air purification for the breathing system. The law is quite janky on it. I think the larger bells at the top are thrusters. Thanks, Cy Reynolds. I had some of these minis and I wondered about that. Spid's in. Welcome, Spid. Uh, Darren Edmonds also is in. Welcome, Darren. They are leaf blowers, says Darren. Yes, awesome. Zzz. Fox goes everywhere. I am. I am everywhere. They are also exhaust vents, says Mayhem. There you go. You learn something every day. Not always from me. But I am here when you learned it. I take full credit. I was in the room when you learned it, so therefore it was my fault that you learned it. I take all the credit in the world for that. And there's nothing you can do about it. This is going to vex me now, this one, isn't it? How is this going to go on? Am I even on camera? I don't even know where the camera is. So this one is one of the little sort of diamond shaped relic -y type things. Could go there, that would work, have it. It's more it's more more better if it's actually at a funky angle and not just parallel to his leg. More convenient if I glue it onto his leg. As I lock the camera. Because I can hold it and glue it. So convenience is always a winner for me. I'll be honest. There's a good way and an easy way. I'll take the easy way. I knew you'd say that. I knew you were going to say that. He's got his little icon there. There we go. Lovely. His minimal space wolf, iconog space wolf iconography. So limited. Minimal is the word. Minimal. Uh, this chap here has dangly bit on his pauldron. He's oh, good God. 
I made a right mess with the glue there on that uh, purity seal. It's a charity seal then. It's not a charity seal? What? Made a right mess with his purity seal. Let me just sand that back a little bit. He's got a purity seal. I've obviously slipped with it and the glue's got all glinky underneath and mangled the plastic up. Let me see if I can get a file in there just to smooth that off a little bit on his leg armour. It's the kind of little rough spot that would show up once you get the primer of paint on there. So we can sand it back a little bit just to clean up that little glue mess. Glue mess. Having a massive dirty grate sanding sponge is not really helping, but never mind. Even if I had a smaller sanding sponge, it's still like in a little corner. I think that'd be fine once it's primed, you won't see that. Uh, he's got dangly thing on his pauldron, he's got the purity seal. He's a bit of a boring one. Dude. Oh, they've not got pauldrons on yet. I must sort those out as well. You know, when you look at for some, you look at closely at something for long enough, and you don't realise that it's kind of missing an enormous part, component part of its whatever. Yeah, I hadn't even noticed they hadn't got pauldrons on some of these. I'm like, what a dipstick, Fox! You're an idiot. Not that we ever doubted you for a minute, but you are really seriously. I'm going to put this on his ass so that when he sits down, he's got this large metal and crystal nonsense on his ass plate and it probably gets in the way every single time and he's like why the hell do i wear that around there you think i'd learn but i'm too stupid i can't learn i'm going to move it a little bit because it's slipped and it slipped again there you go jaunty angle always the winner oh, a little bit on the under area Applying the fluids to his delicate under area. That's on. Uh, what have we got now? Little tiny things. These are just little pouches, but they've got rooms attached to them. So these are fairly simple to add. Splang it on there, basically. And then it falls off. Yay! Yay, it fell off. Now these we could theoretically add uh, after touching a touch of glue on the, on the belty lons. Tiny touch of glue. By tiny, I mean great big dirty blob of glue. Then we drop that. That's always a good start. And pick it up again. We put it there. And done. This guy's actually got a pouch on his belt that looks like it's part of his belt and not just floating in the general area of his belt. There you go. Minimal space. I mean, literally, his entire space wolf iconography is that one little tiny rune, little sort of gemstone. It's a bit, it's a bit rum. I do, th I, I do hope that they eventually bring out more specific space wolf stuff for the for the primaries because at the moment they're just bog standard. You're just buying bog standard Marnies, bog standard Maureens, with a couple of tiny little bits you can add on. You know, and the, the actual add-on set, not cheap. If you were just go to like, you know, GW and buy the the detail up set for Space Wolves, not cheap. And you basically get a couple of heads and some bits and bobs, but not that much. Mostly pauldrons. Not not the cheapest of options. It's a bit rum. Uh have we done him? He's got that. He's got that. He's got his widgly tail. He's got that one. Oh, I missed someone out here. He's got a dangly bit. He's got a tail. He's got an icon. He's got a tail. I've got two bits. I didn't need two bits. Okay. I've over encountered something. I guess I can give someone two of these. Now there's no little flat area on these at all. There's nowhere. This might go on like the back because there's nowhere to easily attach that. There's no flat spot. If you know what I mean. If you know what I mean. If I had a little old brush to hand, I could use the regular cement and put a tiny dot of it on there. 
I could also do it on camera if you like a spoon. Uh, but I don't, unfortunately. The, the brush that comes with the regular cement is far too big for doing tiny dots. I've got a brush for my regular cement somewhere. I just haven't <coughs> burpage. Haven't got it to hand right now. So we've got a spare one of these little cylindry things. So I shall give it to Mr. Reloading. Mr. Loader, Loader. Belta Loader. That's where we're at. Belta Louder. Yeah. Lovely. Do 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 do. Give that a few moments to do its stickety thing. I'll put it in that way around so it doesn't fall off. Right, so that's them done. I've got a few pordroniums to add. We've still got all these things now. More pot uh, pouches. Why was that stuck to the table? That's weird. Um, you've got all more pouches and things. We've still got loads of stuff to add on now, so purity seals and that. Right, quick look at chat while I have a swig of water. Uh, uh, Candy Graham says, Hi Spid, I really enjoyed your video on the Jaeger Le Coutre Reverso. Fascinating watch. Yeah, Spid does a lot of stuff about watches on his channel. Go and check them out. They are a fascinating watch, if you pardon the pun, obvious pun. Uh, I'm wearing it today, it's a really beautiful watch. George is in, George Gabriel. Morning all, George. Hey, George. Hi, dear, my friend. How's tricks, amigo? Uh, do do the best Maureen's, George Gabriel, Yo Gbert. Do do. So, Candy, when watching watch repair videos, yeah, does time fly? Oh, dear, says Panzer. Uh, Mayhem says, I remember a Space Wolf sprue being full of heads and torsos and other dangle chuff. The late rogue trader second edition would Woolofs were all metal sculpts with tails and teeth and runes. Yeah, the extra sprue you get, you either get this one that's a few pauldrons and a couple of heads and some runes and some arms, or uh, you get the one with the with the cloak and a, a swingy thing and some more pauldrons basically. And a couple of icons, like a backpack icon there. It's not a lot of stuff. You'd have to, and they're like, I think it's about 10 quid or something for that, or five or six quid. So you have to get loads of them to do a big squad. So, yeah. I mean, ideally, you'd have a big collection of bits and bobs. When I finished here, I'll have loads of little bits and bobs left over, but none of the Space Wolf bits. So, yes. Uh, I suspect they will get a release at some point in a unique codex. If, if I were you, I'd rummage around eBay for old Space Wolf sprues or browse one of the bits sites available. Well, I'm okay for now. I say I don't. I've got this battle ready, start building, collecting my first army. I can't remember. Combat Patrol, that's it. God damn it. I've got this Combat Patrol, and that's probably going to be it. Because I've got these guys, and I've got me Imperial Knight in my Renegade set that I'm going to make into a Space Wolf Knight, maybe. Uh, and I'll, I'll get some vehicles and bits and bobs. I've got my Space Wolf bikes, and I've got the other dudes that I've already built. Um, so I won't really need much more than that, to be honest. I don't. I won't end up with a massive force of Space Wolves, and if I do, it'll be over time. I might just end up getting another like Combat Patrol. So I don't mind having like the minimal bits. It's just a shame they haven't got the dedicated sets yet. I'm sure they will do. Just freehand runes all over their armour, says George. E no. <laughs> I'm not that much patience or painting skill. Although I did put um, I did put some runes on my Stormwolf, <clears throat> which I no longer have because I sold it, but um, I put some runes on my Stormwolf. I cut some of the decals around so that the rune on my Stormwolf actually translates as puppers. If you read the symbols as close as they are to the old Nordic style Viking runes, I use that as a rough translation, so it roughly says something like puppers on the side of my Storm Wolf. And I'll probably stick with that. I have got a whole mess of uh, Space Wolf decals. I've got the Forge World um, Horus Heresy Space Wolf decal set, which is full of runes anyway. And I'll use some of those on these. I don't mind having like Horus Heresy era Space Wolf markings on my modern day Space Wolves. It doesn't bother me at all. It's all cool. 
Uh, but uh, yeah, you're the freehand master, George. I've not got those kind of crazy freehand skills. Not not at this stage. Right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we have some pauldrons to do. That one. That one. Who's got the naked bit? They've all got pauldroniums. So one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten, ten. Moving on. So we need uh, four of the Black Main Company pauldrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, that's a mistake. Now, the downside is with the Reavers, you can't use any of the uh, Space Wolves pauldrons on the Reavers because they don't have standard Reavers. So, really, the Reavers come out even worse than the inter Intercessors because they've got even less customization. They really have got, like, now there's literally going to be. One guy with a necklace and one guy with a dangly bit, and that's going to be it. That's your lot. That's your lot. Another onion based products. I need to wipe my nose. They'll just have the colour scheme and markings of the, uh, of the great house, which is a shame, but never mind. Right, so. Uh, we need. These guys, they all have. Deep, 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 deep. I forgot how I'm doing it now. Uh, B6 for the left arm for the chapter markings, the great house markings, and then a random selection of other ones for the other ones. Now, I might just for fun and games see some of these pauldrons are more interesting, but unfortunately, all the interesting figures have got bog standard default pauldrons now. I've kind of screwed the pooch on that one. So I might use some of these just to give these rank and file generic dudes. Although I've got the grenade launcher dude there. Give these generic dudes some interesting pauldrons, I think. How do these compare with? Yeah, they're exactly the same. Well, they're almost exactly the same. I'll give the I'll give the grenade launcher dude this pauldron with the big extra bit on it. That's probably a command thing, but I don't care. Just looks like a great, dirty, great big pauldronium. That's all. They can all have interesting pauldrons with string and things. This is quite good fun to paint. Although I get the feeling these are mark. These are like the non primary armor part. Oh no, maybe they are. One, two. These guys are going to have different pauldrons, really, to the rest of the guys. But I don't really care. There's my army, and I'll cry if I want to. Ooh, there's a nice one. Somehow I've got glue on one of those. Why didn't I... Oh, why didn't I use any of these? I've, oh, why did I use these boring ones that come with... Oh, man. I said use B6, but I could use some of these interesting ones that look like probably for commanders, but... Just, there's some really nice ones on there. I didn't even notice. Flange magnets. Flange magnets, the lot of you. Oh, well. So there's one there that's got the scroll work on it, but I can't really use that on a grunt. Because that would look really weird on a rank and file minion. Ah, uh, bum shuffles. Oh well. Oh well, where's that other guy gone? Uh, no, it's that one, isn't it? Well, some of them will have different pauldrons. I don't really mind. It's not the end of the world. Uh, these not might be the right pauldrons anyway. These are like old style pauldrons, I think. These aren't actually going to fit, are they? Are they? Are these actually primary style pauldrons or not? Can't quite tell, you know. Yeah, I think they are. Just that one looks a lot wider than normal. I was to give him that one on his arm there, you see. Just looks a bit. I like to think maybe he wears that one because it's got that little bit of shielding there from the grenade. I'm just making it up. I'm just making it up. Shut up. Stop. Stop. Don't bring me down. Don't bring me down and stop doing that copyright. Uh, there's one there with some runes on it. We'll have a bit of that action for somebody can have that. There's no trim on it though. That's a bit boring. I don't like. No, I don't like pauldrons that don't have trim on them. 
I find that boring. That one's mysteriously got glue on it. I don't quite know how. I'm doing all this off camera, aren't I? I do apologise. Uh... That one's got this fantastic wolf on it. Oh, yeah. Ooh, you know. Ooh. He's got the heavy weapon. He could have that one with the wolf on it. Mm, that'd be good. I wish I hadn't given these guys the generic beat. I wish I hadn't followed the instructions now. Fascists. You can have bees, and you can have bees, and you can have bees. Everybody can have bees. Uh, okay, well, what I'll do is I'll just cluster around after the next 10 minutes and make no decisions at all. How about that? How, does, how do you like them apples? We'll save them special ones for other special people later, then, maybe. One, two... Uh, I'm, I'm rife with indecision now. Rife, I tell you. <laughs> uh, I'll just give him that one. B6 like everybody else. One, two, three. If I thought about it, if I realised I wasn't just restricted to B6s, I could have got creative with the other guys that are doing like special things with their weapons who were uh... oh, screw it, you can have one of them big flashy ones. I don't care. There we go. Right, that was a just flailing indecision moment. And then we need four of the generic -y ones. Uh, the left are uh, the right arms. So we've got one of them. I don't really want to do any ones with scroll work. I'm, I'm kind of against doing the pauldrons with scroll work on them, just be, purely because that means I've then got to freehand words. And that's where things get complicated. And you've got to freehand words and nonsense on them. It's like, I can't do that very well. I'm not very good at that. So I'm trying to avoid using all the pauldrons that require freehanding on them. Uh, one, two... But I like to give them some tassly bits. One, two. I don't like these ones with the spikes on them. These ones here with the little nubbly spikes. Because that just looks like a pain in the arse to paint, to be perfectly blatantly honest. Especially if you have to put like a pack marking on there. Is it left arm is the is the great house or slash chapter, and right arm is the pack markings that both are like blood claws or blood wolf claws or wolf butts or I don't know, whatever they are. Is that right? I've got that right. Right, pauldron is pack marking. Like what they are. I don't know. Never explains this anywhere, anywhere, ever to anybody, ever. Do 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 do. It's like the box art uh, doesn't really give you a clear indication, really, as to what the markings need to be on the left pauldrons. Like on the revisits, this kind of black and black and blue pattern but it's not quite clear what that pattern actually is and on the on these guys it's just red with the with the symbols so you can see on them guys but i don't know what that symbol me i can't remember what that particular pack marking means i'll have to look it up because i need them all to be consistent but yeah i can't see what the reavers pulled an artwork is and you don't see it here either it's like oh you ugh, i can't i'd need to have the codex with that I don't know. Uh, what's chat doing? Uh, oh, it's jumping, that's what it's doing. Uh, la, 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 la. All right. Hi, honey, I'm home, says Dave. Hey, Dave, butch that model. David butch that model is in. Uh, they are aggressor pauldrons, model making gear. The primary equivalent of Terminators, but hell, they are your models. Use what you want. Oh. Can't use them then, can I? No, I don't really want to. <laughs> I don't want you to terminate the pauldrons on my bog standard jimpy little fellas. Let's not use them then. Let's get them out. I like the ones with bits of string and runes on. I can get away with those. The ones with the great house marking. That's fine. I will not use them. They'll just go into spares. And we can do that. That's not a problem. Uh, it can go into... Eh? That one. That's 
one there with the great house marking. Uh, in that case, I shall. I shall simply use. I shall. I must. I must. I must improve my bust. Wait, what? We've got another generic one there then. Uh, I'm not that fussed, but I don't want to be putting like Terminator pauldrons on non Terminators because that just seems silly. So I shall. I shall find. They may look awesome, but they did look a bit more heavy armor than uh, generical boys. Uh, I haven't got one more simple six, unfortunately. It, but I've got another one with string on it. Yeah, oh no, it's got the flangey bits on it. Curse you, flangey bits. I do have a hundred more boring sixes there. Yeah, go on then, we'll, we'll use them. I guess there was method to the madness. There we go. Uh, because I know I'll just play a game with somebody and be like, actually, you've got the wrong pauldron, doesn't shut up, slap. Uh, he has no one to blame but himself. He will see your comments, of course, after he's glued them on. Haha, <laughs> no, too late. It's a little fella. Hey, Dave. Welcome, Dave. Uh, Edward Leonard's in. King of the Squishies is in. That's the universal symbol of Squishies. Uh, they're all gutted now that I haven't glued those on before I read that. Damn, he read the chat first and was all ready for the fun. Uh, Hugo Source Collector's in. Hello, Hugo. Welcome, my friend. I'm trying to do a burp, but it's really kind of hidden away. It's like a McBurp. Uh, how's the Bionic Man, says Mayhem. And Dave says, so, but he's on the mend. Wow, what's happened? I don't know what that is. Uh, Speedy Correct says, Wolf Butt Clan needs to be a thing. <laughs> yeah, these, these guys are from the Wolf Butts. They're the ones that turn up last. They're kind of the last ones you have to go to battle. Uh, yes, what's going on, Dave? Who's uh, what doing now? Something been going on? What? I don't. I don't. I missed out on that. Uh, one, two, three. Hello, I'm missing something here. One, two, three, four. I appear to be missing a pauldron. God damn it! I thought I'd cut enough off. Now I haven't cut enough off. Jiminy Dim. Oh, right. One more then. Let's clean some pauldrons. It's pauldron time. Let's clean some pauldrons. Yes. Pauldrons are good for health. Everybody saying hello to Hugo. How are you doing, Hugo, my friend? Put that there, put that there, knock the light, swig of water. What time are we on? Good God, it's five o'clock already. I've done officially flock all. Yeah. Not good, is it? Not good, is it? No, it's not good. Now, I actually enjoy cleaning uh, cleaning up the uh, the pauldrons. I don't, I don't know why. It's because I think it's very hard to actually mess them up. Because... It's almost like undergating. The numbs are generally on the underside of the bit where you can easily file it. And when they're on the side here, somehow, 99.9% .9 of the time, they clean up beautifully. With no fuss. Like, normally you like you might fight to hide nubs and stuff. For some reason these, they just zip, zip, and a bit of that, and a bit of this. And there's no evidence there was ever a nub there. And it just, when something works like that really nicely, it's just like, oh yeah. It becomes enjoyable. You feel like a god because you can just go zib zib zib. Suddenly that piece is clean and marvel, and you're like, I am unstoppable. <laughs> Tell you what, I'm going to be gutted when these sanding sponges are no longer usable. <laughs> the ones that Kenneth sent me. I don't think I can actually get them. So. I'll find a reasonable facsimile one day. Get all the right arms done first. Yes, yeah, so am I right there? If somebody can remember, it, it's pack markings on the right arm, isn't it? So that's effectively what their what their role is in the pack. Like their, I think the blood claws are the guys on bikes. Or is that the raven? The talon, the blood talons, or something? Oh no, I can't remember. There's all like wolf claws, and I think blood claws are the guys on bikes. Something storm talons or whatever are the ones in flying machines. 
and different things like that. I think anyway. I've I've got a I've got a list somewhere. I've got my codex. I've got a, a screenshot of the codex page. Shh! Don't tell anyone. Okay, yes, I've got that bit. <laughs> I am unstoppable. No, you're a loony, says Mayhem. I am. I'm special. I'm not a loony. I'm a princess. You know that. You know how this works. One nub, that seems unlikely. Oh no, two nubs, there's one on either side. I didn't see that one. Little devil, you little devil. I shall now clean this pauldron in the style of James Mason. I don't know why I did that. I don't know why I did that at all. Yeah, I don't know why, I just find pauldron cleanup kind of relaxing. Uh, yes, you're correct. Pack markings are equivalent to tactical squad markings and devastator markings, etc. Yeah, so it's basically saying I'm a, I'm an intercessor or a heavy weapons or a whatever, jetpack dude or whatever. But they've got special names like wolf butts and smell kings and whatever. Fang... Wolf, fang, kill, death, car, people. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yeah, maybe I'll make these out to be like... A, 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 I don't know, I can't remember how it works with the great houses. I assume there's like... The great house is like the chapter. So these are like Ragnar Blackmane's chapter. But do they have like sub-chapters? And I can't remember what the sub-chapter's called. So the wolf butts could be like a sub chapter of Ragnar Blackmane's great house. So they still have that the Blackmane symbol on the pauldron, but they're like a different thing. So I reckon the wolf butts are like the bad batch, you know, they're like the rejects. They're not that great, they're a bit rubbish. But they're still lads, you know, they're still part of the gang. Just a bit rubbish. They're like the last one you picked to be on your team kind of thing. They're like Space Wolf Fat Kid, you know what I mean? They're the last one that you get to pick on your team when you're picking your football team. Okay, I love him. He's the only one left. Yeah, we've all been there. We've all been there. Uh, if the portion thing is right, that's the clause about the clause. That's getting far too confusing. I like all these ones with bits of ropes and teeth and bones and things on them. I, I, I enjoyed painting them the last time I did some Space Wolves. Because the last time I painted some Space Wolves was the first time I painted Space Wolves. I didn't know nothing about them. I still don't. <laughs> what am I thinking about painting the Go for Ragnar Blackmane? This is the thing, you know, it's like... There are different great houses, but whenever you get the the moulded pattern on the pauldrons, it's always for black main. It's like, well, I can have whatever house I want, as long as it's that one. Otherwise, I've got to just do it with decals. It's a bit rubbish. Bit rubbish. But I figured, on the off chance that I never get to play these and have to sell them one day, I'd probably just make them the black main house. Most sellable, probably. What most people think they look like, so... Yes. Uh, his current knowledge is three years out of me attempting to educate, says Cy Reynolds. Yes. Great companies are the wolf versions of Company 1, 2, and 3, etc. I thought Great Company was the, base, was the equivalent of a chapter. Like... You know, chapters like, for example, Dark Angels, Blood Angels, Yellow Bellies, whatever, you know, Angry Birds. <laughs> Don't know where I'm going with that. I thought Great Houses were just another name for chapter. And that's why you get, like, different chapters like Black Bane and others. But then do you get, like, sub things within a Great House? Because that would mean, then, that I could continue to have the Ragnar Black Bane snip that off now the the, uh, the great house company 
I'm arrived. Hello, says the Raging Modeler. And everybody, hello. Welcome, my friend. He really needs educating, says Mayhem. Yes. The great... Uh, what are we up to? Do, 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 do. The great companies are the wolf version of company one, two, three, but wait, there are no company. What? Oh, you special princess. It's no, it's coincidence that Black Mane's house is the same as the wolf chapter icon. I don't know. I've not read the codex. I just, I'm just making stuff up. I don't know. I thought the great houses were the chapters. So that it, they have that on the pauldron, the wolfy head. But if it's not Ragnar Blackmane, they don't have the wolfy head. I don't, I don't know. I know nothing. I'm just building these things. I'm just, I'm just doing what the instructions tell me. If there's something I don't know, it's because Sam Reynolds hasn't told me that, and it's completely his fault. And there you go. Delegation is the key. Yes. <laughs> Deflect. Deflect successfully, I think. There you find. No, Fox, you Egypt. The great houses are the wolf names for space marine companies. Wait, what's a company compared to a chapter? This is where I don't know you. I don't know that much about space marine. So what's a company and not a chapter then? Hang on. Right, there's no point trying to teach me while I'm doing a stream and on a live chat because I'm not going to pay attention to it. I'm far too busy trying to be pretty on TV. Uh, right, so let's give some things on some other things. Do, 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 do. Right, so we want the fact glow. Wait, what? No, says Sam Reynolds. <laughs> Wait, is Sam Reynolds disagreeing with me or disagreeing with... I've, I've lost track of who's disagreeing with what now. I'd like to think it's not just me that's completely out of the loop here, but it is. <laughs> but yeah, there's no point trying to educate me anything while I'm actually doing a live stream, because I'm not paying attention to anything anybody's saying, really. I'm not even paying attention to anything I'm saying. If I'm not paying attention to myself, you guys have got no chance. Hey! Oppa! I'm trying to get anything to go into my brain. Good luck with that. You crazy diamonds. Wait, what? No, FNAF, FNAF. Did he, did he, I did read the copy of the codex that I acquired access to. There's that other pauldron that I totally thought I'd lost. Uh, I don't know. It's been three years since I read the 8th edition. Something or other. Do, 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 do. Sticking, not sticking enough, or oh, more, more stick. Also on camera is always a winner, Fox. You know that to be true. Do it on camera, Luke. You know it to be true. Roger, sticking now. And this little chap here, you see? Uh, that one. Ah, uh, dropping. Okay, now the other side. I'm using the heavy glue here just because it uh, makes life a little easier. These will stay on for a minute until I get to the extra thin. Remember the regular cement. It's viscous and therefore does more stickity than the uh, non, than the extra thin. Plus most of this is covered up so I can be a bit more generous with a dirty great big blob of glue and just spong it on there. Spong. Oh, flippity flappity. Pop it, flippity flappity poppity off. That's what I just did then. Gimp. Right, uh, blob off the glue. I'll have a look at chat in a minute and see what people are shouting at me. Is this like me trying to get Chris... See, it's like me trying to teach Chris... And she's, I'll start that again in English. It's a bit like me trying to teach Chris during a live stream in chat the difference between orcs and grots and squigs. 
when he was calling Grot Squigs and Squigs Orcs, and that is like, no, you, oh. Right, going with the extra thin to reinforce all that stickity. Stickity poppity floppity off, there you go. Switch your glue under there just to get it to run underneath. Again, not on camera, always a winner. I apologise that half of this has been off camera because I've still not figured out. Despite the big piece of tape on my bench telling me where the camera focus point is, I've still not made a note in my brain that it's here. Because I asked Bess, you know that. You wouldn't change me for the world. If I was competent and knew what I was doing, you guys wouldn't watch me because you'd be like, I'm just watching a man stick things together, it's really boring. You know, if you're if you you wouldn't sit there and watch a little old lady go up some rickety steep steps if you knew at the end of it she gets to the top and goes about her business. But if there's a potential that she might slip halfway because they're rickety and dangerous, you know, and she might fall, then you suddenly find you captivated and you can't take your eyes away. That's kind of with me and skill levels of ineptitude. If I knew what I was doing, and you knew there was going to be no potential for me to screw anything up, you, you wouldn't watch. Probably not a very nice way to explain, to explain that, but you know what I mean. It's the potential for goofs that keeps you watching. You don't watch a man juggling chainsaws because you're interested to see how how his, his prowess in juggling chainsaws and that it interests you. You know why you watch a man juggling chainsaws, let's be honest. There's only one reason you watch a man juggling chainsaws. Oh, woman, are you a blithering fool? I thought I smelled burnings. Do you open your parcel? Oh, that's a point. No, I didn't. Uh, I forgot that. I received a package while these are drying. Over there, out of the way. You go over there, young lady. Think about what you've done. Making me try and do thinking things, I'll have you know, is not a good idea. <coughs> oh, yes, I received a package from Adam Wakely, <laughs> Raging Modeler. Yes. Uh, yes, I received a package and I've been waiting to open it. And I forgot that when you came in. <laughs> okay, so with access to the codex, I don't have the Space Marines codex. I only have like the. A, a screenshot of one of the pages, I think. You know there are 12 great companies, houses for the wolves, and 13th Wolf and Werewolves Company, yes? I do now, I've just read those words you typed out. What's this? So this is from Adam. This is... Flamlet. Flamlet? What's this? This is... <laughs> ah. oh. I've not had a UFO. Oh. If we've been talking about like UK snacks and stuff, I need to send it back. I need to send it back to the manufacturer. That I pop no, I'm not having that. No. Hang on. Where's me? Where's my very important pen? Where is it? Where's me? Where's oh, Where's me sharp? There it is. God damn it! No, there's no. Oh, it's not a possessive. Oh, there's no apostrophe in UFOs. God. Oh. Anyway, yes. If you've been watching our Monday shows where we talk about like British 1980s snack foods, UFOs are just a favourite from when I was a kid. Oh. Marvel at the UFO. Listen to its creakiness. That's not the microphone, that's the camera, you idiot. I don't know if this will come out with the with the noise gate on my microphone. Yes. Feel the squishiness. And then taste. Oh. Paper? Oh, sherbet. Mm. Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wow, that's the first thing I've eaten since about two o'clock. Oh, that's nice. Oh. 
if you've never had them, it's basically rice paper with sherbet inside. And you eat the first mouthful you take is like just cardboard. And then the sherbet comes out. Oh! Right, I'm seeing these now. Screw you guys, I'm eating these. Um, um, now I'm corpsing it in the corner. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. Do you mean me going start raving mad and hitting Fox with his own leg? I can't help not knowing stuff that I've not been taught by anybody. I just think space walls look cool. I, mean, I like walls. UFO. Ow. In the name. <gasps> I've got a Roswell. Oh. Ow. In the interest of. Oh, another one. There you go. Ready? I'd walk a million miles for one of your smiles, my man. Cycle. In the interest of science, I shall explain the UFO. Get all the share bit to one side. Do some autopsy. The alien autopsy now, you see. Oh, I'm sciencing. Got to try and be neat and to lengthen my protuberance. I'm using my big tool. I need to make it bigger. Yeah. There we go. Oh, dropping. So we have the hollow device. No human being has ever seen inside this UFO until right now. We are the first human beings in the entire history of the entire universe that have ever seen the interior of this UFO. That surface there, that surface there, no human being eyes have laid have laid eye on that, apparently, until just now. So you guys are the first in the universe to see any of that. And then what you... Ah, um. Nom, 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 nom. Dude, thank you very much. I'm just going to eat these now. Um, 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 um. Live mail timing. Uh, please tell me it's not a confetti bomb. No, no, please tell me it is a confetti bomb. Please. Ah. Raging says no. Almost finished. We'll be done in the next week, I hope. Are there any mayhem strokes head? Strokes head. UFO is also an acronym, so each letter should be capitalised. Snack naming fail. Yeah, exactly. UFOs. UFOs what? UFOs head? UFOs banana? UFOs mother-in-law? No, it's just... I really wish you were going to... If you go into going to business and with a product, please know how to use actual writing. Nom, 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 nom. Nom 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 Oh I can hear my teeth now uh, Unfortunately Where's the uh, English Confection <laughs> description confectionery ingredients really Just a bag of confectionery bomb I'll put them away now. Mm. Oh, tart is the way to describe that sherbet. Right, tart. Dude, thank you very much, Lee, for those. I shall give some to Mama Fox as well. That's very cool and very kind. Thank you very much. I appreciate those. Ah, whoa, sniffles. Uh, those taste more like paper than anything, says Muse. They do. They just taste like rice paper. When I was a young kid, eating rice paper was the kick-ass thing to do. It looks like a football team, like a rubbish football team. Uh, Graham says, oh, I'm off. See you later. Take care, Graham. Thanks for coming in, my friend. Those things play havoc my fillings. I'll be suffering for that later on. Trust me. <laughs> According to No Such Thing as, as a Fish podcast, they are made by the same people who make communion wafers for churches. Uh, hi, Lee. It says Lee Stevenson. Yeah, absolutely probably right. 
Ah, wait, I'm never eating religious nonsense. Oh dear. Uh, I think Fox has a sugar rush. Absolutely. Never had UFO, says Lynn. I don't think you've got them over in the US. Most welcome, my dude, says the Raging Modeler. EC Idaho's in. Welcome, EC Idaho. Where is Ed Straker when you need him? Oh, the Roman hair. Oh, yes. Mm. Right, so. Uh, we've got them bits on. We've got the pauldrons on. Now we just have some little small items to add. So let's see what we have. These are just like little, effectively, tchotchke. I'm going to have to do a big burp. <coughs> oh, hello, Matron. Yes. Warning, I do burp on my live streams. And I don't care. So if you're offended by burps... Ow. So I don't know what we can fit on these guys now because we've got lots of purity seals, which of course we've got. Uh, I assume we've got lots more purity seals for the other guys. Yes. So we've got tons of purity seals. Uh, we have a few little icony things that aren't specifically space wolves. Space wolves! Uh, but I don't know what we can fit. We've got loads more pouches and things, but I don't know what we can fit on where. We might have to go on a dude by dude basis, I think, and see what we can figure out. Uh, there's a few little books. I quite like their books. There's a few of these little sort of reliquary things where it's like a little box with a with a relic in it, like a key or a bone. But they're kind of fiddly to glue on, like the other ones, and. Can't really be bothered to be perfectly honest. There's a big grip. There's a girt. One of them's got a girt big knife. I could glue on someone, but I don't know why one person would have a girt big knife. Uh, who would have a girt big knife? Oh, I think I would give it to. I can't give it to. Him. Oh, actually, that's a point. He's got a great big knife in his hand. He's going to kind of need a, a scabbard with no knife in it, isn't he? I do happen to have a scabbard with no knife in it. Yes. Yeah, so we can have at least a couple of them with, with uh, stabbities. Uh, there's another open scabbard there, but I've got no one else with a knife going on. So we'll stick to the big stuff, like the pouches and things, first. Get them done. We'll get some of them done. Again, as always, it's really what we can, what we can fit where, because we might find that most of these guys now have got too much junk. And all the junk's in the way, if you pardon the expression. <laughs> yeah. Let's look at Captain Stabity first. He's got the rather rude, rather rude tail going on. He can see me tail! But he has got a Stabity in his hand, so he needs the open Scabardicus. Let us do this now. A little bit. Not exciting when I do these, is it really? Figures and stuff. Not really exciting for you guys to watch, really, I know. Also, I need to learn the cam. I need to maybe move my camera next time so it's not up here and down here, because I tend to work here. I don't know why I put the camera all the way up there. But if I move it now, I've got to fart about with focus and stuff. And it's coming up to 20 past five, so we'll sort that out for next time. Next time. Now, a bit like the magazine on the bolter where the guy's reloading on the scabbard, there's no hole in the scabbard. You know, where the, where the actual stabity knife would be. So it's a bit of a shame. We could have molded that in, probably no problem. I'm I'm doing sugary hands now, aren't I, with these? Space walls may include a small amount of sherbet. Sherbet! I was going to send you them or a kilo of bananas and prawn. <gasps> bananas and prawns. I don't mind any of them, dude. All of them are good. They won't last very long, you can tell you that. I'll make sure Mama Fox gets a load as well, so thank you very much. It's very kind of you. A true friend is one that sends you nonsense snacks from the 1970s. <laughs> I thought they were a uniquely British thing, but given the fact that like English is the 17th language on the back of the, on the in ingredients, that there's about 10 other languages before English. Yeah, I suspect they're not anymore just a British thing. I thought they were a uniquely British snack, like a Swizzles Matlow thing. Clearly not. Sherbetty aftertaste now. Sherbert! Right, so he's got his stabby talons there, so I need to glue this onto somewhere. He's got the stabity in his right hand, which means he would draw his, his knife, theoretically, from there. Th 
theoretically, which I can just about fit in with some shenaniganery. If I, if I shenanigan it. <laughs> so. Mini, 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 biddy, boo, biddy, 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 boo. Tiny touch. I'll use the fat glue just as he's got this little sort of bleb on the back that I can use to attach to the belt. So I'll put a tiny touch of glue on that and jonk it into there. Stonk. And then hope it stays in place. And lock the camera, of course. Because, of course, I lock the camera. Don't be crazy, man. Of course I do. It's, it's the law. Okay, so there you go. See, I'm thinking logically here is the bloke with the big knife, and I've given him the device in which the knife, the house in which the knife lives, because of course he's got the the knife house, because the knife has to go somewhere. So we'll put that there. Uh, he doesn't have a purity seal. How many purity seals have we got? One, two, three. Three. Mm. Three purity seals. Well he's got a he's got a floofy tail and he's got pure he's got a purity seal on his gun. There you go. He's got on his bolter. You can bugger off. You've got a purity seal. Bugger off now. Uh he's got a purity seal. He's got a reliquary. And he's got another purity seal. And he's going brap, so he's alright. Let's do let's do another couple of stabbities, but these guys haven't drawn their blades, so they're just full on stabbities now. He's cleaned up. Uh, Candy Graham says, I'm making fun of UFOs, but I just realised they're probably delicious and that will also probably never taste one. Sadness. <laughs> Duh. Quantum Man says, UFOs is the acronym for unexpected floating ostriches. Uh, scale Model Muse, I had those when I was a kid and they are indeed made by a company that does the church cookies. I like the way you call them church cookies. <laughs> Cy Reynolds says to Radio Model, check messenger, I am sending you something. Is it just mocking me for my lack of knowing about Space Wars? Do you know? I've, I've quite literally made three Space Wolf Space Marines in the past. Three. My entire model building career, I've made three dudes and one vehicle. And that's all I've done. I know nothing. Apart from these. Painted, I should say, not made. No, I've not studied them. I'll figure all that out when it comes to painting them so I know exactly what to paint them as. And, you know, exactly what to do. And then I'll read the rest of it when I have to eventually play them. Until then, I shall live in blissful ignorance. No, oh, dropping. The outside is having a bar. I can smell barbecue smells coming in from the garden. But it's the it's the... Lighter fuel and briquette smell, not the cooking meat smell. They've not quite got to that point yet. Clearly. It's a complete it's a complete mockage. I expect nothing less. I mean I expect it from people that I know in real life, like you know, Colin and Dad and Chris, but from so from Simon, absolutely yes, I expect complete mockage. But for people I you know, not in that circle of mockery. It comes as a shock. Uh, what's happening tonight? Has anybody... Oh, that's a point. Uh, ah, I did have word back from Ted, by the way. Um, Ted is... I think Ted is streaming tonight. So the, the, the War Hamster tonight is on Ted's channel. Uh, if you notice, though, he did accidentally schedule it for three o'clock this afternoon. Um, yeah, I, he knows. I texted him earlier, but he's like, I'm at work at the minute. I can't change it till I get home. But yeah. So I think it is Ted's turn to host tonight. So they will be on him and Chris tonight, I assume. I, I assume it's either Ted and Chris, or it might just be. I can't remember. I've lost track of who does what now. I think it's both of them tonight. But yes, yeah, Warhamster tonight on Skipper Scale Model, Skipper Ted. But don't forget, of course, before that, when I finish here at 6 o'clock p.m. of the p.m. 6 o'clock p.m.s, 
Uh, it's Dad and Colin on the Scaly Models channel with the In Between Show show, where there is also an apostrophe error, which you need to correct. I should point that out. There should be no apostrophe in the In Between Shows show. You might have quotation marks, perhaps, around the in, in, around in between shows. But there's no apostrophe. But yes, it's uh, Dad and Colin at 6 p.m. on Dad's channel. So when you're finished here, you need to rush along with great fastness to Scaly Models and watch that. And then you can go and have your dinner. And then at uh, whatever time Ted schedules his for, because, you know, I don't know, probably nine o'clock, I guess, or half eight, uh, it'll be Ted and Chris. I don't know what's going to happen here because Ted's doing his Hydra. When he finishes his Hydra, what's the plan? Because I don't know anyone that's bought him any more Warhammer. And I don't know how he's going to keep cope with buying himself more Warhammer. So I don't know what happens. Because, you know, the Hydra, I bought him the Hydra. Uh, and Dad... Uh, wait, who got, us, who got him the... Who got him the Bane Blade? Was it me and somebody? I can't remember who got him the Bane Blade now. Anyway, yeah, they've all been provided for him. And uh, <laughs> so I, he's going to actually have to, I think he's actually going to have to be forced to buy himself a Warhammer. I know, I know. I'm loving it. I'm absolutely loving it. It's just fantastic. It doesn't get any better than that. Don't get much better than that. There's nowhere to put this knifey where the doesn't stick up into his backpack so yes so uh, t I don't know what he's gonna do once he's he, he, he got I think he got bored of painting the Bane blade let's be honest, and finished that because it is a lot to paint I don't think I don't bored not the right word fatigued by it got weapon fatigue from it so he's gonna have to actually buy himself more more Warhammer isn't he oh I'm gonna I'm gonna love watching that like, oh I've got to go into the shop and buy thing oh what do I do I don't know That'll be, it'll be a, a moment. I, I know he's been to his local Warhammer store before and found the whole thing extremely confusing. Bless him. Stabberty knife, stabberty knife, a stabberty knife. Stabberty knife, boom. That one. Uh, you know nothing, you... <laughs> You know nothing, no, 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 nothing, neither, nah, says Mayhem of Works. Undefined fizzing orifice, matron. Oh, talking of which, um, just for research purposes, what I should do is I should eat that one. And that one, that one. Nom, 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 nom. I can confirm the research checks out. Sirens the Fox, I found a super sour challenge where proceeds go to charity. You are being sent said challenge. It was a couple of quid. You are required to film it with a face cam. Oh no. Oh dear lord. You just emotionally blackmail me into doing it with charity nonsense. Damn it. I could go off you quite easily, you know. It's easy to go off people. You do know I've got Dental issues that mean I can't eat lots of sweets and sugary things. This is all bad for my teeth. There's a reason I had to have two teeth out last year. <laughs> I shouldn't be eating sweety things. I still do because I'm an idiot, but I don't know. It's another stabity done. There we go. Uh, me and Adam are also getting says sour challenge and we'll film ourselves doing it. Oh, you're gonna well if you're gonna go on camera. Me and you, Fox, got Ted the Bane Blade, says Scaly Models. Oh yes, we did. That's right. I wasn't sure because I because I know me and you got Colin the Bane Blade as well. I wasn't sure if it was me and you as well with with uh, Ted. I couldn't remember. Right, it's purity seals. As long as it's not like about a foot long sour sweet that I can't eat for more than a second, <laughs> that'd be fun. We've got to eat it all. Ah! Oh. Yeah, my dentist. My dentist is going to find you and kill you. Oops. Ping. Uh, no nubularity. Mm, I'm sure I've got a bag full of purity seals somewhere, but 
Uh, they're probably on a sprue. I need to spend time trying to find them. I always do that when I finish a kit. I always do that thing where I have all the best intentions in the world of actually going and getting all the bits that are still on the sprue and cutting them all off the sprue, cleaning them up, and just putting them into the bits box. And then it, I, I start doing it and realize I really can't be bothered taking all the bits off the sprue and cleaning them up. So what I tend to end up with is like a box full of bits with bits of sprue on them because I just cut the sprue around the piece and that's it, that's as good as you get. Like, well, I could cut it off the sprue or I could just snip the sprue there. There you go, done. There you go, lovely. Apart from that one that just snapped. Oh, well, never mind, I'll put that one in the bin. So we've got two purity seals that we're playing with. Oh, oh, oh. Seals, get it, seals, get it, get it. Laugh, damn you. Still not on camera. Right, Fox, stop being a spoon. I'm over here, aren't I? I do apologise. I really am. Um, I don't know why I put the camera here. I'll, I'll move that focus point later and then for the future streams. Do 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 Right, so we've got two purity seals. Vast numbers of purity seals here. Uh, you must consume spoonfuls of the substance that makes the sweet sour. What? Yeah. Yeah, that's going to really not do my teeth any good. <laughs> uh, so, two purity seal dudes. I'll give one to... This chap's got a tail. And he's got a grenade launcher as well. He's, he's got all... He's stoked. He's got loads of stuff. This guy's got a dangly bit, and that's it. He can have a purity seal. You get a purity seal, and you get a purity seal. Everybody gets a purity seal. You've got some already. You can bugger off. You've got a tail. You've got a purity seal. You're the one with the shonky leg. Uh, so these two, I think. We'll get one each. Ba -ba -da -ba. I do like putting them on the guns, but it does make them difficult to store. Then again, this guy's just, he could be stored in the box standing up, so. Not so bad. I do like putting them on the weapons, though. I don't know why. I just It just looks kind of cool. If I ever get... Colin to print me off a um, a bolt pistol or a bolter 3D print. I've done it the wrong way around, haven't I? Fudge. Um, I must remember to find out where I can get some full size purity seals. You can get like 3D printable full size, life size bolters and bolt pistols. And I thought if you're going to do that, you really want to put a purity seal on it. But you'd have to make it like a proper like wax. Or maybe not wax, but a plastic and material thing, I think. It would be the good thing, the, good, the done thing. I like putting them on the backpacks as well. I, again, I don't know why. It seems stupid because they just burn away, but... But they are quite fiddly to get on the backpack. Unless I do it there. I don't like using tweezers because you can't push down with the tweezer. You put it there, but then you can't, you can't easily push it down into place. When you let go, it comes off. We'll find out. Touch of the fat glue again off camera. I had any fat glue on the actual brush. Oh, yes, we have. And then we drop it. Fantastic. I'm such a spoon. Go there. Honk it down. Covering up a little vent. That seems like a sensible idea. No, and then it falls off. Yes. No, I'll just leave it there. It's fine now. Stuck on a rivet. It'll do. It'll do, donkey. That'll do. Lovely. So that's them done. Purity sealage. Quality javelinage. Uh, one model might like is a Lehman Russ battle tank, says Max. He's already done the Hydra. I don't think he'd want to make another one that's, because it's very similar. He does like his tanks, but I don't know if he wants to make another similar thing, to be honest. You uh, might like a Valkyrie, maybe. don't know. Uh, Raging Modeler. 
Are we? No sugar in foal, Fox. Your teeth will be fine. Okay, that's all right then. Did I miss anything so to eat roast gamma dinner, says Dave. Yes, missed everything, but because you rubbed our nose in your roast gamma dinner, we're not going to tell you anything. There you go. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Something just fell over as well. Uh, what else can we stick on? Uh, we've got... I don't like these little clock things that you stick on. These little clock device. I don't like them. I don't know why. They just seem a bit too steampunk to me. I don't... I don't, I don't like them. Don't, I don't use them. These are a pain to glue on. The little reliquaries and stuff. Yeah. And we've got some books, but I don't know if we can fit these on anywhere. anywhere. Little books of goodness. But again, it's gluing stuff onto people's belts. Yeah, don't grab him by the thing just glued on, Foxy Spoon. But if there's enough space on anyone to actually fit them. On their belts. You could go on the back. I've got to be able to put it where I can get to it to paint it as well, which is the other thing. Often the butt the butt area is an easy way to oh, just, oh. camera's in the wrong place. If I glue it onto the butt area there, it's an easy place to get to to paint it. I think we'll have one of them. Can anybody else get one? Show me your butt. Uh Stabity dude, maybe. No, oh, throwing things. Other oh, stabity dude. The thing is, uh, I don't know. I, these things always look terrible when you've got them just bare plastic and you can see the shininess of the glue everywhere. It's only when you finally get them like in prime and you realise they don't look quite as bad as you thought. So we'll give Grenade Launcher Dude one and we'll give this guy one. Do, do, do. It's like, you know, Space Marine, my first book of alphabet ABCs. Learn to read the Emperor's Way. Oh, yeah, Valkyrie forgot about that one, says Max McGinn. I don't know what Ted would actually do, to be honest. Uh, uh, Warhammer wise, I don't really know. You'd have to have a look. Could be any. You'd have to have a look around and decide for himself. He might be decide to do something completely different. I don't think he'd do a big figure. I don't know what Ted would do. The world, as they say, would be his oyster. Her. Uh -huh. I do not know. He likes his tanks. He likes his boats, and he's done some planes. I don't know what he'd be into. I think. Uh, now, of course, the only problem with that is that by getting rid of that nub and sanding it, you kind of sand away the the sort of the interior of the book effect because it's sort of like a book, isn't it? So. You sand away the little recess bit where it's supposed to be like the leaves between the covers. I think we'll live. I think. This requires some cunning painting, that's all. The Hell Drake would be a nice one for Ted. I don't know. Maybe? Big more stuff he might be into. I don't know if he's into like creatures and things. Remember, he tried, he's painted the Valkyrie with like four different colours, so yeah, I don't think he'd be into complicated paint jobs. Of course, he's got a million uh, Viejo paints, so we'd have to we have to say to him, you can use whatever colours you want, Ted. Don't, don't, just, just, just wing it. You know, after you use Citadel paints, just go, go for it. Have it, have it large. I'm gluing these books on, but I'm going to regret it because I don't have to paint the bits that are pages, and there's nothing moulded in there for them. I have to do some funky painting there. Aquil, and then it won't look like a book because it's, it's, I've lost the 3D effect. Also, I can't pick things up. Do I want to do a book? No, I don't know. Actually, I'm thinking about it now. 
Maybe I just want to do more pouches because pouches are great. Put the books to one side. I've, I've cleaned them up. Let's just see what can we do with these pouches. Pouches? We don't need no stinking pouches, senor. Could he have? He could have pouches. He's one. Two, three. We've got four sets of pouches. Uh, we could have. He can't have pouches. He's not got enough space. This chap might be able to fit pouches on. Or might not. I think not. He's not going to get pouches on that. His butt's far too cluttered. He's a clutter butt. He can have pouches. Yes, there's one. Two. He won't fit any on that. He won't fit. We might not fit any on him. Pouches, we don't pouches. Oh, he could have pouches. Three. No, maybe not him. He can have pouches. There we go, four dudes for pouches. We'll get these. I'll see if I can get We've got what? Uh, about 15 minutes. I mean, Fox, Fox, Fox. Maybe the book is about making more pouches. <gasps> pouches. Pouch guide. Yeah, that'd be good. Get him a... Get him a manta, says Lee Stevenson. No. No. Don't want to give Ted resin. <laughs> I don't think Ted's thing will be resin, to be perfectly honest. It's uh, it's amazing that we've actually got him to build Warhammer to start with. We suddenly throw a load of forge wall that and he's just going to run away and hide. And we'll never get him to look at Warhammer again. Hey, ping. See if I can get these cleaned up and stuck on right fast. Because if I can get these four on, what I'll probably do is then just call these four guys done. And these, this, this batch of dudes done. And then we'll get the Reavers started next week. Because um, I could add more stuff to them, but I just want to get these things finished now. So we'll be here for like months. Because this is the kind of thing that you, if you're just building this for yourself, you can have built all these guys in a day. When you're doing it on a live stream, of course, and you're busy doing chat and everything else, you only get to do a little bit, even in three hours, and then you have to wait a week for the next bit. And then, so just doing things like there's a screaming child outside shouting a lot. And I want to just like just tell it to shut up. Um. Yeah, you don't get to do much because you've got like other stuff to do while you're being all presenty and stuff. So, yes. I'm not normally this slow building Space Marines. What I'm trying to say. One. Oops, ping. But it is difficult when I'm, you know, I've got to take account of where the camera is. I've got to, normally I'm just sitting scrunched over the desk with the stuff in front of me doing it. I'm, you know, interacting with you guys and doing other things. So, yes. Building on a stream is, is more tricky than, uh, well, not more tricky, just it's just slower. It's a slower process. Especially like me, if I, I already I always take care with nubs and stuff anyway, all the time. So it's just, I, I'm slow to start with. I can still build a squad of space marines in a day. That. But I got to the point now. It's like I just want to get moved on to the next bit. So we won't spend weeks putting every little bit of detail and tchotchke on them. We'll just give them the bits they need. <laughs> Which of course is pouches because they're easy to paint and fun. But I don't mean like Rob Liefeld pouches because that's just nonsense. That's called not being able to draw. Even though he's very rich from Deadpool, which makes me really angry. 
hate when somebody who can't draw makes it rich from not drawing very well. <sighs> right, that's that, and that's that, and that's that, and we'll get rid of that, and put that over there, and then we'll go. Round and round and round she goes, where the ball is, who the hell knows. There you go, which one's got the ball underneath it? Right, so, nice quick thing now, because it's just putting these on, and these can just sit in place as I drop them. These can just go in situ, and then fall off. Yes, outstanding quality control here. Quality broadcasting. And all I need to do is just touch some glue to it. Nice and simple. Blue will suck under. There we go. Lovely. Lovely. These always line up with the belt, which is quite nice. Done. Pouches. It's a thing, isn't it? Pouches. How many pouches do you get for a pound, Cole? Three pouches for a pan. Three for a pan. Oops, a bit too much glue. Touch the glue to it, get it underneath. That should be more than enough. I do like the pouches though, because they, in a way they speed up the painting process because instead of having to faff around trying to paint the, you know, the undersuit and the belt and stuff, uh, you, you can now just paint the pouch brown and it covers up a lot of the other stuff. And because they're quite simple to paint, fun to paint, it could, oh, you need to spill coffee on it. It can make it a bit easier to paint. It can save you a lot of time. Decides to stay where it is, that would be good. Butt pouches. Of course, the thing is, of course, here's me sticking all these pouches on their butt plates. All well and good. But if I put a load of like, ammunition pouches on your butt plate, how would you get the stuff out? It's not the most easily accessible place, is it? I know, I know. You know what, it's 40k, I don't care. They have, they have babies, they have servitors made out of flying babies, so let's not worry about realism and practicability <clears throat> in the 40k universe, I think is not something we need to consider. Oh, get in. There we go. Oh, yeah, bub. Oh, yeah, bugger. Oh. oh. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what I don't know what Ted would do next. I hope I hope he does stick with it and they keep the Sunday thing going because it's nice. It's a nice way of getting, you know, for Ted to have some content for a start. It's nice that Ted's got some extra content on his channel. Nice that Chris is, you know, Chris and him are sharing that. Um, I hope he's enjoying them. He hasn't got a clue about them, and that's fine. It's, it's, it's nice to watch somebody who's not in, steeped in the in the in the whole thing of Warhammer, just having fun building them for the sake of building them. So yeah, right. I think we're going to call those guys done because I can't be bothered doing anything else on them now. They've got some widgets and bit. Oh, there's another. I found some more pouches. I'll sort them out in a minute. On one more guy. Um, if I should do, I'll do them now quickly. Hang on, let me just. You go there. I've just spent ages neat, make them all neat and everything. I've got five minutes. Come on, can I fit them on anybody before I do all that? I don't think anybody else is ready to. Is anybody else ready to receive pouches? That's a good question. I can't remember now. I don't think they'll fit on anybody else. Oh, ping. Yes, it's just nice to see someone who doesn't really care about the law or the, the what the Warhammer is. He, he doesn't care. Not of any interest to him. He's just enjoying it. Enjoying building a model. Yeah, I think I think that's going to do. I don't think I can fit pouches on anybody else. Not them. Oh, maybe, maybe this one. Maybe. Oh, stop dropping them, your spoon. Knocking the camera. Ba -da -ba -da -da -da. It's a cluster flange from start to finish. Go on, he can have them. He can have them. It won't even come off when they're not glued. Let's get these done really quickly, and then we can call these guys done. I like to finish things on the end of a stream. I don't want to overrun because, of course, I've got Dad and Colin starting in a minute. Uh, so before I go, uh, because I'll be rushed at the end, uh, don't forget, of course, 
Uh, if you'd like to help support this channel, thank you to all of you who do already, your patrons and channel members. If you'd like to help support this channel and keep it alive, I do 100% depend on my patrons and channel members to, you know, pay my bills for me and literally put food on my table. Um, because this is what I do full time. I don't, I don't go to a job of work, so I depend on them. So if you'd like to help support this channel and keep it alive and guarantee I can keep making silly nonsense content, uh, please do consider becoming a patron. Patreon.com slash model making guru. There's a link at the bottom of the screen there. Or uh, if you want to, you can just simply become a YouTube channel member by clicking the join button under any of my videos, including this live stream. Click that join button and that will take you, that will make you a YouTube member uh, where you get early access to lots of content. Both patrons and members get early access to stuff, uh, they get advert free content. Uh, and they do get some exclusive content as well. Not actually going to fit now, is it? Now I've, now I've just prepared it. It's going to be a bit funky and not quite make any sense, but I'm getting it in there. He's having it anyway, regardless. Don't care. So yeah, please do consider becoming a channel member or a patron if you haven't already. So it is really massively gratefully appreciated because without you guys, this channel wouldn't exist. I literally wouldn't be here doing this ever. So big massive thank you to my patrons. Uh, I will, of course, be back uh, tomorrow on the eModel show, tomorrow night on eModels.co.uk channel. So don't forget about that, me, Ted, Colin and Chris. It's not my what's in store this week, it's Colin's because he missed out last week. Yes. Uh, and I am still filming, I'm filming now the either final or penultimate episode of Tabletop Trauma Centre Lehman Russ. Uh, when that has finished, hopefully this week I will have the first two issues of the... Um, fan home dodge charger one eighth scale dodge charger to to build and film so stay tuned for those during the week i won't be doing previews uh, premieres like i did before they'll just be videos that go up uh and then i have this i'm going to put my foot down when i finish the lehman russ it's going to be macarius vanquisher uh filming building and filming the forge world macarius vanquisher for my death core creek guys i'll be building that and filming it and trying to figure out how the hell to build resin because i'm no good at resin so that should be interesting for me if not for you but we're going to leave it there because those guys are done now we'll put them to one side to dry next week we'll crack on with the five reavers which hopefully shouldn't take quite as long and when they're done we can shuffle these guys away and we'll crack on them with the death guard which is more dudes basically uh, for the sunday bills but that's going to be me done for now uh let's have a quick look at chat <clears throat> be a member it's nice says bobbins hey bobbins thank you very much uh, la, 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 la. I'm up to nothing happening in chat. Chatting, chatting, chatting. Uh. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Be honest, apart from the heavy metal team, does anyone just use Games Workshop paints, says Dave to Cy Reynolds, who used to work at GW. Uh, fun fact, the heavy metal team don't use exclusively Games Workshop paints. Most of them even use a homebrew medium over Labia Mermaids. So there you go. Yeah. Uh, nothing else in chat. Good fur, good share. We've been saying really good. You get cool fox emojis, says Pandra, if you become a member. Yay. Although I think, to be honest, most of the people watching are already members of patrons. So, yeah, we've got, well, then again, we've got 32 people watching. Hope you've all given a thumbs up, by the way. Anyway, that's going to do me. I need to bugger off so Dad and Colin can get ready. So, thank you to everyone who's been watching. Thank you very much. I will see you all tomorrow. I'll see you in the chat. For, I might not make it to the chat for Dad and Colin in the, for the next hour because I'll be making the dinner, but I'll see you in the chat for uh, Chris and Ted, or Ted if he's on his own tonight. I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, stay tuned for all the other stuff. I will keep you updated. Until then, I will say thank you very much for watching. Let me check my button still works. Bring it on. Yes. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves. Go make something awesome. Go be awesome. And until next time, adios amoebas.